right. What are you writing? The continuous existence of the human soul. They say they can talk to the yeah. dead. This is your son. Yeah. Yeah. Prove there is life after death. I've got Jo coming through and she's really excited and that and she's just touching. Deliver messages to the grieving from beyond the grave. Can anyone take this information? Are they spreading false hope? Your mum's standing right in front of you. <laughs> Exploiting the vulnerable. For all the good and evil deeds done. Or telling us what we need to hear in troubled times. Eternal progress open to every human soul. Three times now we've had the proof that she's with us. And that keeps me going. All right, bless you. Who is that? Right. I don't know why me, I honestly don't. We're talking about the spiritual healing. Uh -huh. I just know I can. I feel that I've got to come up to the very back of the church. Gordon Smith is a medium, said by many to be the best in Britain. There were times when this lady was very conscious, and then other times... He works in the spiritualist church, and his accuracy is known to silence the most hardened of skeptics. In the spirit world. It would be very easy to convince people that I had some kind of special powers. Five minutes to go, five minutes to go, five minutes to go, I just keep hearing. I want to be where somebody's gone into a hospital and they just got there and it's the mother that passed away. But mediumship's not anything special other than what it can do for people at the right time. Five minutes to go, five minutes to go. Somebody said this when mum passed to the spirit world. Who can understand that for me? Because it's just going over and over. It's not for me, it just passes through me. Does that make sense? Speaking. Medium Sharon Neal prefers to work in the theatre. Nope, I don't play guitar cards. Blind since birth, she's left her native Belfast for a sellout UK tour. Until December, I'm on tour at the moment. Box office takings means Sharon can earn a living from spirit contact. Maybe it's because I'm the only one in the UK who is totally blind. Obviously, what I'm doing can't be explained as anything but authentic. I am a channel from this world on the Earth, the earthly world, to the world on the other side, or the other side of life, or heaven, or nirvana, or whatever you want to call it. That's it. And I think a lot of people want help, and this seems to be the right time and the right sort of uh, energy at the minute in the universe, I think. We're all different shapes and sizes as mediums, and I like my mine a bit glittery. <laughs> when it's my time to go to the spirit world. I'd like to be cremated and have a packet of glitter dust mixed in with my ashes. <laughs> Jane Hamilton Parker and her husband Craig are also career mediums. A former advertising executive, Craig now runs his own psychic website getting at least 2,000 hits a day. When it comes to, for example, premium rate telephone lines, the biggest seller is pornography. The second one is all the mystical industry. So there is definitely a big industry out there. Really, our life is the same as anybody else. The only difference is it's that I'm communicating with the, the spirit world, and it's very normal for me. If I'm peeling potatoes for chips and things, if the spirit will come near, I have to say, excuse me, darlings, but I'm a little bit busy in getting the tea ready. Another time, if you don't mind. In Glasgow city centre, from nine to five, Top medium Gordon Smith works as a barber. Being a barber is probably what I did first in my adult life, so it's what I know. Being a medium kind of came after that. His double life has earned him an unforgettable nickname. I, I really don't like being called the sidekick barber. Um, but I suppose there's worse things they could call me. 
It actually sounds a bit scary, doesn't it? Yeah, again, a lot of people just so don't understand the word psychic. They, they really don't uh, understand a lot of the things that we do as mediums. People will say, I'm in line with the devil, I'm calling up spirits and stuff like that. And to be quite frank, these folk do not have the first idea of what the whole thing's about. I've met loads of demons and devils in the barbers and probably more in the pubs in Glasgow at the weekend. Demons and devils. <laughs> Tonight, Gordon's demonstrating mediumship at a nearby spiritualist church. Have you been in Stirling before? No, I've never been up. He's taking along his son, Paul, who's also his manager. Caffeine, nicotine and all these things, that will bring me back to life. Alcohol. No, 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 it's not, it's not before service. a service, yes, never I remember the rule. Yes. We should be making tracks. Oh, no, I'm tired. In Jersey, Sharon Neal is getting ready for her one-woman show. Thanks very much. That's fantastic. That's I'll great. get this ironing done. Thank you. Right. I'm so naturally tuned in to my uh, well, team on the other side that I don't need to worry about preparing. Do what? As well as tour manager Griff, Sharon claims to have a spirit team working for her on the other side. Yeah. Oh, there's eight of them. Some of them would be a bit like bouncers, really, where they kind of make sure that only one person communicates at the same time. So I suppose you'd say they're a bit like the telephonists or the switchboard operators, but I'm just the exchange, and I just receive the information and pass it out to the audience. Because if you can imagine being in a room in front of 500 people and you're on stage, you've probably got another 700 people behind me trying to communicate. The show you are about to see doesn't involve tricks or gimmicks of any kind. It's not about fortune telling either. Just messages from friends and relatives that have passed over. So far, my team have never, ever let me down. And I know they won't, because I'm doing everything for the right reasons. I'm going to start off, um, and I don't know who I'm going to be going to at all, but we'll see how, how things go. And um, John, there's a boy here by the name of John. He's only 22, 23 years old, and he died tragically. Yes. Who am I with? How are you, Margaret? Hi. How are you? OK, thank you. A bit breathless. Oh, don't worry about that, because <laughs> I'm as bad as you are. Right. <laughs> Margaret, I've got a John here. I'm very, only a young fella, maybe 22, 23, roughly. Yes, exactly. He is saying to me, he's, he's here, he's saying, tell Maggie. Yes. Ma not Margaret, Maggie. Yes. Tell Maggie I'm here. I'm rested. I'm happy. And you know what? I am so glad it happened the way it did, because I didn't have to think about it. Right. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. Um, he's talking about... Um, oh, OK. He's pointing to the head here. Yes. And he's pointing to here. Yes. It was oh, su suicide? Yes. Oh, hanging? Yes. <clears throat> Sorry, I just told him that not to give it to me that close, because I didn't want to choke. I can feel it, you know, because I have to go through exactly what they're going through, you see, just so they can explain to me what happened. Now, this was at the back of a property? No. It wasn't? No, it So this wasn't, wasn't where, where he was hanged? No. It's not outdoors? No. I'm getting somebody else coming through that. OK, fine. Right. Can I just say to you, Margaret, he's OK now, right? He's really, really happy and he's in great form. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you. OK. Um, um, I could ask you to join with me, ladies and gentlemen, and, uh, and thought... There are over 500 spiritualist churches in Britain, and spiritualism is now a recognised religion. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you will allow their loved ones to come forward, teaching them that there is no dead. Its followers believe in an afterlife, and that mediums can contact the dead. OK, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> OK. Right, I have a, a gentleman here, and all I know is he... Uh -huh, it passed to the spirit well through falling. God, there's such a lot of water around me as well. A lot of water. And it feels as if I could have fallen into this water. This is the feeling. I'm out the back over here. Can you understand that, my dear? Would that make sense to you? But it's a gentleman. 
I'm shaving all my hair off here. Yes, exactly. Would it, would, is that something he would have done? Just shaved all his hair yeah. off like that yeah. because it's just a sense of doing that. All right. Why is that? <coughs> okay. I'll tell her. Sort the family out. Would you sort the family out? And that's right. <laughs> okay. That's his message to you. Please sort the family out. Hold on a wee second here. I want to, he's talking about teaching. I'm a teacher. Good. There you go. Thank you. Who's got the candles? I'm seeing can... <coughs> Me all the time. Right. Just see all the candles being lit there. And again, very happy in the spirit world. And he's just popping in to say, hi, I'm still around. OK? Still Thank around. You. Now, I've got a hat on my head now. Or a bonnet. OK? Like a cap. The feeling is it's just like a vibration. It's the only way I can describe it, something vibrating around me, which tells me, yes, somebody's here. And it's almost like one of the last things he was able to really make. It's at that point I will ask them to let me be aware of them. And I may be aware of how they died. God, I'm smoking now. I'm getting the sense of somebody taking a draw. You know, who smoked the old woodbine or capstan, the real strong ones? My dad. Because I just got a right whiff of a cigarette here. I then may be aware again of, of, of what they look like. You know, or immediately they may just say, I'm so and so, I'm here. Tell them I'm here. I get the sense of him doing this with his fingers. He's, he's fiddling about with things. There must be a George or a Geordie, because I've just mentioned that. As I said, George, somebody said Geordie. Yes. OK? Take his love and know that he's still alive, he's still around you. I'll say God bless you. No other names. You know, I could take them all. Was there any way he could have known any of that information about you? No, I've never ever seen him before, so... When it came to the park, does anyone know anyone that fell into water from a, from a, from a cliff? Well, basically, that for me was that's, that is Rory, and no one that I know or anybody that I would know would ever know that about me because he's, he was my son's best friend. So, to me, this is, I am not a skeptic anymore. Where am I going to? Can anyone take the name of Cecil passed over? Cecil or Cecilia or. I can't make it. But mediums name. don't always Cecilia, get things right. Cecilia, Cecil. Uh, Strengthening the case of the cynics and skeptics. Is there a woman here by the name of either M M Maeve or Maud or May? Is there a woman in the audience, Maeve, Maud, May, that sort of name? I'm going to the left somewhere from here, from me, I don't know where, but anyway. Somebody can take a gentleman who died in a plane crash. Helicopter. Something to do with water. Um, over, it wasn't over water, but it was, but it was, um, I know we're surrounded by water, Snow. but that's not... Snow. What's your name, please? Andy. Can you understand what I mean? Um, helicopter over snow. Oh, snow? All oh, right, okay. There's somebody still on the earth, right, who has not got over this. Absolutely brilliant, because when you pass that kind of thing... Entertaining, in the broadest sense. <laughs> I didn't enjoy it. Why not? I didn't believe it, to be honest. Is it the first time you've been to anything I came like with this? a very open mind, but I'm not convinced. A bit of overtime there. So why do mediums sometimes make mistakes? I have nothing to hide. I don't, I don't care what people think anyway, you know, because I just do my job, all right? But, Griff, I told you last night, I said, gee, my energy is, my energy is not great. I, I, yeah. I did say it to you. Like, I only had about three hours sleep the night before, actually. You Couple. seemed to get a bit vague and I said, you sucked at half. What was happening? You seemed to be not connecting or it was... What was happening there? I, I, you see, it might seem vague to you, all right? But you got to understand that if they have... If, if the communication comes through, the communication comes through, you know, it's as simple as that. It might seem vague to you because you weren't getting, you weren't, you weren't receiving the message. When I was born, the, the midwife who delivered me told my parents because I was born the seventh son of the seventh son, I would become a healer or somebody with some kind of supernatural powers. Whether that be true or not, I honestly don't know. Hi there, it's Paul Smith here. I'm calling on behalf of Gordon Smith. Hi, is that you, Michelle? 
All right, hi there. Um, it was just All through my childhood, there were episodes. Sometimes, before I would go off to sleep, I would get this vision of just a lady's face appearing, two eyes, it would start within this light, and then it would build up, and, and I would just hear her whisper to me, and it would literally send me off to sleep. And it wasn't until years later that I'd actually seen a picture of my grandmother. Um, there were no pictures we had in our house, and somebody brought one, that I actually recognised it as my gran. It wasn't something I really shared with people, <laughs> um, because the older I became, the more strangely people reacted to my voices or, or when I said I saw a vision or something. So I stopped telling people at a certain age. But it still was something that was real to me and that happened to me. I, I thought that you'd had... Um... But even those closest to Gordon find the idea that he can talk to the dead difficult to believe. Um, I do believe there's something there, but, as I said, I like proof, tangible proof. Do you believe he's... Talking to the spirit world when you stood up there? Mm, that's, that's a difficult question because well, I don't really have any way to say if he is or he isn't. But some people, some sceptics would say, well, he's telepathic, which in itself I think would be a pretty amazing claim anyway. I suppose it's like any religion where well, you can't really prove the existence of God, nor can you prove that God doesn't exist. No, no doubt there's a lot of charlatans out there who, who do make things up and no doubt a lot of people are hallucinating or are imagining things that just aren't there. But then again, the, there's just so many of them that common sense would tell me that some of them must have seen something or experienced something. So are you psychic? No. Not in any way, shape or form. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> What is certain is that a growing number of people are getting into all things psychic. Good news for medium Craig Hamilton Parker. The internet has become um, quite a tool for the spirit world, really. It's bringing people into thinking about these things that probably might not have ever dared to go into a spiritualist church. You can phone a psychic or for £75 get a reading by email. Once the connection's made, somehow, the spirit will find a way for us to give the evidence that's necessary. It's not heart, I think it's emphysemia. Thank God for spell checkers. Remarkably, people write back to say that was exactly right what you said. This fact was right, that name was right. Bennett, Bennett. And I thought, how can we do it? How can we just sort of open our minds to the spirit world, get the information and just put it down and type it down and it's is correct to that level. This is the one thing that just seems kind of a bit mm, to me. Yeah, well, it, it can be a bit mm, <laughs> uh, because it, it, people find it very hard to conceive the fact that you can do a reading for somebody without them being there and all you've got is a sentence, can you get in touch with my granddad for me, you know? I mean, how do we do it? I don't really know. Craig's new venture is a psychic school, what mediums call a development circle. The opening session will be held in a medieval inn close to Craig's home in the New Forest. This is how mediumship's taught. It's passed from one medium to another over a period of many generations. With luck, I can help bring on a few that are going to have those qualities that make a good medium, the qualities of accuracy qualities of compassion, qualities of love that go with this. I think everybody that's coming must have a feeling that they've had some experience of some sort. Probably spontaneous, probably completely out of control. Probably sometimes even frighten them a bit. The objective is to help them to train it, to help them to be in control of it and that they can turn it on when they want to, rather than be at its mercy. Christine Forster is one of Craig's new pupils. She's been seeing strange things at her home in Gosport. I woke up during the night 
why in front of me was this, I, mean, I wouldn't have called it, I suppose, an orb, but it's just a light, uh, just a clear light, and it was just moving down towards the end of the bed. So I went to wake Dave up to tell him, and like, Dave, Dave, look, there's something there, you know, so excited because he's going to see something. Her super skeptic husband, Dave, is not convinced. Probably find it somebody in the flat shining a torch in the window. No! You know, that's probably what no. it was. No, it was real clear. Well, not clear, um, almost white, kind of like, and it was just about that big, just moving down towards the end of the bed and then disappeared. Hmm. You dream about things and you can, you can wake. I said I was you can, awake. You can think you're awake and no, still I, think you're, no, you know. No, I was awake. Can anybody do this, Craig? I think most people can develop a psychic gift, but uh, only a handful in the world, I think, can develop a mediumistic gift. We don't know if they've got a mediumistic gift until they start trying. I've always seen things. It just got to the point of not being able to ignore it because so much going on. The lights going on. Um, and the lights did go on by themselves, so it wasn't the electrics. <laughs> um, toys going off during the night. You know, I've never seen I've never seen anything, ever. Yeah, but you've witnessed the lights. I've heard of, I've heard a few going things. Off. But I'll just, I just I don't put that around. down to it's like spiritual or paranormal or whatever. I'll just put it down to like the house is creaking or you know the faulty <laughs> electrics or something like that. I really want to go to Craig's development circle. Um, I want to see if I can develop myself further, because I would love, absolutely love, to be able to do... To prove me wrong? I'll prove you wrong when you die. <laughs> when you're dead and you would go, oh, my God, Christine was right, you were wrong. But, no, I'd love to go, so, yeah, I can prove today. And also, I think, but not only that, it's... I, even though I've seen so much and heard so much, my children seen so much, stuff disappearing, lights going on, I still question it. <laughs> right, Sean, I've had loads of calls this morning. Yeah, so you tell me, yeah. It's in amazing. the shower, I've had a call, I'm in glad. the loo, I've had it all, right? But basically... I'm glad you're getting them, not me. <laughs> yes, I know. Well, I did, I did, I did speak to a section. Yeah. Private sittings are a major part of a medium's work. On the Jersey tour, Griffiths found Sharon a consulting room at an alternative health centre. I've only done four shows. I don't think I'm a dullard. I'm trying to analyse everything that I see, and I just can't figure it out. Okay. Oh, serious. It's on the left. Sharon's artificial eye is so life-like. When I'm talking to her on the plane, it, I was starting to think to myself, I wonder if she can see me through that and then obviously as you know when I went to get her after she had a little nap she has to take her eye out every day so it's like I guarantee she cannot see anything you know I, my biggest fear is I'm gonna vague out as we get relaxed sort of walk down the road and sort of you know just relax for a split second and end up you know she's gone down a manhole or something like that so you know I'm sort of you know on tender hooks all the time that I, I can keep it together Hi, Robbie. What's reckon about the football tomorrow night? We have a good chance. Well, hopefully. Jersey landlord Martin Kelly and his partner Jackie have arranged a sitting with Sharon. It'll cost £40. I'm a bit sceptical of these things because um, when it comes down to it, I do kind of find it hard to believe that they can contact people on the other side. You do think, is it true? Is it not? So, like, by going yourself is one way of finding out, isn't it? Martin has suffered a terrible bereavement. But he's keeping the details a secret. Robbie? Sorry. Why don't you want to give us any detail at the moment of what has happened in your life? Because, as I said before, I am sceptical, like, you know, and, I, and I feel that if I say something now, maybe um, Sharon might see something of it, like, you know, right, and get a little clue. And if I don't let any inkling out at all, then I can honestly say that if Sharon does come through for me, like, you know, at the end of the day, I will really believe it and I will get the biggest uplift 
that anybody could ever give me. Someone could give me a million pound right now, and it wouldn't be the same as well. If Sharon came around and told me what I wanted to know, I want them. I would look if I could just have them back for two seconds and just stand in front, just give one big hug, just say goodbye. As I would if I was leaving somebody at an airport. Then I would. I would feel much better myself. I just need that comfort at the end of the day to know that I can do it. I can, I can, that I will have, I've got something to look forward to. That I can turn around and just give them one big hug at the end of the day. And that's what I need. Mm. Okay. Can I just say, uh, first of all, um, your your mum, uh, Martin, is passed over. No. She hasn't. No. Then it must be. Wait a minute. Hold on. Can you understand the name of Bridie or Bridget? Yeah. You can, Jackie. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sorry. You okay? This is um, your mum, or grandmother? No. I don't, I'm not saying biologically grandmother, mother, right? But her attitude would have been very much that way. Very motherly. Motherly no. type of person. No? All right. Um, she's so... There's... Oh, great. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. sorry. Turn hey, that's good. I beg your pardon. I'm sorry. Is that right? That's good. Cool. Before we come in. Just turn that's off. good. <laughs> I like it. Sorry about that. Uh, Do so you know what? Sorry. She's in stitches at the minute. Because I said, I said, she, said, she said, what happened? And I said, oh, her phone went off. And she said, yeah, that's, that's just typical of our Jackie, right? Can you understand me? She's connected with you. All right. Right? You've got to give me a yes or no. Yes. All right. Yeah. I've got a gentleman who is um, trying to communicate. And he would have... He says he says he, he, he wants to come. He's, I don't know which one who which one he's with, right? But he says um, he wants to say that he did not have the chance to say goodbye. Can you understand? Yeah. He passed very suddenly, right? Yeah. He, he's he's quite young. You yeah. know, it'd only be maybe um, 21, 20, 21, 22. Yeah. Young, right? Mm. He's thin in build. Yeah. Right, thin in build. He's putting his hands up, he's putting his left hand up in the air and he's punching the air as if to say, great, great, I'm through, you know, I've got here, you know, it's great. This is your son. Yeah. Yeah, he's here, he's brilliant, honestly. And you know something, he said, I'm so sorry that I didn't get a chance to say goodbye and I'm sorry for everything, right? This was very, very tragic. Yeah. Very, very tragic. Now listen, don't you crack up as well. <sighs> She's bad enough, he says. <laughs> She's bad enough. He's pointing to you. He's pointing to you. He's going, hi, Ma. How's it going? You know? Do you understand me? No, it's not. I'm not his mum. Jackie's not his mum. You're not his mum? No. no. What way are you connected? The, the, I'm a stepmom. I'm asking you straight. No, I'm sorry. I'm not changing it. I don't care what you tell me. I know what he's saying to me, right? He's saying, hi, Ma. How's it going? But as I said, he's got a great sense of humour, right? Yeah. But I'll tell you what, Martin. He said to tell you that it was nothing to do with you. Okay. It wasn't. It was nothing to do with you. All right. No. This was self-inflicted. Yeah. Okay. All right, and it was here. Yes. Oh God, I just get this tightness, tightness, tightness. Right. But he was found. You know. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it was too late. Mm -hmm. Right. But he's talking to me about the cider. Yes. The cider drinker. Yes. Yeah. The cider yeah. drinker. Yeah. Yeah. And um, you have a ring, or a watch or something. Yeah. You have his ring. ring. His ring yeah. It's on this one. Yeah. That ring there. Yeah. That one there. Yeah. He says, I love it on him, and I'm so glad he's wearing it. And you wear it all the time. I never take it off. No, I know you don't. He says, even whenever you wash your hands and all, never take you it. still don't take it off. No. Right? You're into country and western? Not really. No, I, I do. Although Gareth, no, I'm, I'm sorry. Gareth I'm not, Brooks, yeah. not Gareth Brooks. What is it? Yeah, Gareth Brooks. Well, that's country and western as yeah. far as he's concerned, right? <laughs> Only lately. Only lately, yeah. yeah. I've got to sing a song. But I'll tell you what. Oh, yeah, tomorrow, song, actually, tomorrow, tomorrow never comes, right? Yes. Yes. You don't ask me what that, what that what that is. Tomorrow never comes, right? That's it. He says tomorrow never comes, right? And he says that means a whole lot to you. It does mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does. I can't make it up. It's too much. 
I couldn't because I've nothing to go on. I can't look at somebody and go, oh yeah, well that person looks like they might have a grandmother who's passed over. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't have any non-verbal communication. Why don't they just say it's Jim Smith here or? or... Haven't a clue. Okay, I have no idea. Sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. But um, they normally just say, um, "Oh, it's uh, you know, you're f I'm 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 the father or I'm the mother or, or sometimes they 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 do give the names and sometimes they don't." See, I keep saying this: the names aren't important. It's what is in the in the message that's important. You know. I mean, people got to make up their own minds. I'm not here to try to convert someone. I'm just here to do my job. Martin can finally reveal his story. His son took his own life. Weeks later, his father was killed in a truck crash. Sharon didn't mention his father, but Martin's got what he wanted. The one place I really was desperate to contact was my son, and things that Sharon said to me today, nobody would have known. And I can honestly say that without, with my hand on my heart, that nobody would have known it. She yeah. described him to a T. Yeah. His hair, his height, what he was like, and uh, she mentioned that he drinks cider, and he did. And not an awful lot of people know that. Mm -hmm. And actually, uh, the last drink that he had was cider as well, like, you know what I mean? So um, these things, nobody would know, and I believe it. To me, I believe it. I don't care what anybody else thinks, I believe it, and that's all I'm asking. Because these things, nobody would know. She's, for want of a better word, made my day. Like, you know, she made my four years, really, actually, when I come down to She made my four years. <coughs> hold on, hold on. Regan. Regan. Christine is preparing for the first meeting of Craig's development circle. Are you nervous? No, not ner I don't know. Nervous and excited, but probably be really excited afterwards. Hopefully when those good stuff happens to like prove you wrong. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Just have to let me know, won't you? If you see any ghosts, send me a text. <laughs> <laughs> God, you're so cynical. Maybe I am dreaming, maybe I am making it all up and I'm just a bit of a nutcase. But the toys have just been going off left, right and centre again. Worried what she might be getting into? No, not really, because if it's start if I think it's starting to get a bit over the top, you know, if I find her floating in the bedroom, then I'll stop, you know, I'll put a clamp on it, but no, she'll be alright, she's sensible enough. Other things have been happening also. Um I was laying in bed the other night and I looked up to the ceiling and I at first I thought it was my dream catcher. And I thought no, my dream catch was not there. I knew it was over the windows. And I looked some more, it just seemed like a, a haze of mist on the ceiling. And then um, this rope was spiralling down, coming down towards me. Because quite often I would see like a mist or a haze either on the floor or on the ceiling. And then I could just kick myself and think, oh, why didn't I wake up, look at it, and then shout for Dave and show him. And <laughs> it just don't work like that. The thing about mediums that makes me feel uneasy is the fact that there's normally always, in my eye, in my view, some sort of monetary gain attached to it. You know, and when they start talking to themselves, it, it, in my eyes, you've got to be logical. You stand there and you think to yourself, my God, they're just having a conversation with themselves. That's all they're doing. And they're just picking up on things and that, that's it. I just, personally, I just don't believe in any of it. That pier is going to be rebuilt. The Australian don't got any more about Iraq and Iran. I think there's going to be problems over there very shortly with that, particularly with that Iran. Well, it's going mad, isn't it? It's going mad. Well, he was pronounced dead. Make it tired. Should we go to bed now? No! Yes. 
Did you predict that last time? I had a feeling that I, I predicted this. We'll just see what the outcome is. Yeah. The first meeting of the development circle is about to begin. The trainee mediums will try and develop their intuition with psychometry. We've got a few things. We've got a mobile phone. A Holding an object, they'll try and pick up on the characteristics and memories of its owner. If they can just get a little bit right, Whoever give themselves, a, particularly at this beginning stage, it's something that's going to give them a boost of their confidence, I'd feel really pleased. To you first, Phil. First impressions. There's somebody related to this person. That they've got some kind of um, uh, problem with the lungs. That's all I'm going to give. Okay. This person might have a weakness in the back. Humour is, is an integral part of what makes them tick. I'm hoping they can dig a little bit deeper with their intuition and pick up on those things that you couldn't possibly know by guesswork. OK, I get a rainbow with this person. Um, I get a blockage as well. Um, something to do about the year. Um, and also a connection to gravy. Um, I don't know if they like cooking, but there's something about gravy. Whose is it? <laughs> Your... I knew it was Yes, I thought it was the positive thing. That was Tell excellent. Us... Well, let's have the detail. What's what? Um, about the weakness in a part of your back. I've got a bad back. My uh -huh. right back. <laughs> Love humour. Yeah. Also yeah. said about... Gravy. gravy, yeah. Gravy, I can't place the gravy. We're going to move on and do another one. Throw it whatever comes to you. First impressions are important too. Oh boy, I felt a bit of sickness then. I don't know if that was for me or from this person. So, um, I, there's been a, a bit of a, a, a mountain to climb. That's what I see is a, like a peak of a mountain and somebody going up it. So, there's been some kind of um, struggle. Ask your intuition. Well, I, I, don't, I, just, I just saw a sheep then. Uh, not, okay. not, a, do. not a real sheep, yeah. it's just a, a cuddly toy sheep. Okay, and one more thing. Don't censor it, don't change it, let it come. A hula hoop. Whose is this? It's my phone. It's your phone? Yeah. Hula hoops, I don't think, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> see you right with a hula hoop. But let's have some details there. I thought it was a secret, but... Uh... Um, th there is, has been a struggle, and it's still ongoing. Sheep. <laughs> <laughs> Now, let's get a little bit more depth now. The first thing I've felt, <laughs> and I feel it again now holding the watch, is if I've got stiff... My arms feel really stiff for some reason. I don't know if I'm using them a lot, but they feel stiff. Heartache, I've got loss, and I want to cry. Can you identify any details about that, a time in their life that that might have happened? Ask your unconscious, it'll give it to you. I could just see your eyes. You saw that? Real sad you eyes. See. Okay, that'll do. You've got obviously got very deep. We'll leave it now, we're going to look into that. Ooh, that got you quite. <laughs> you really go for it. I saw oh, that's great. Uh, you. Patches and someone's eyes. Is that what you but see? Now let it go, because it's not your emotions. Now that's one of the things you remember. You, that's somebody else's emotions. Now let it go. Let's see how correct it is first. Now whose is the watch? Mine. I work with screwdrivers at work constantly every day, and I've now got pains going down the bottom of my. Um, little finger and also down the bottom of there. I've seen the company doctor about this. Why was she picking up, do you think, particularly about the eyes? I mean, have you been sort of feeling like almost like you want to bottle up tears sometimes? Yeah, I also, I mean, I always get quite emotional on that, whatever the issue is. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's really good. It's really, really, really good reading. Excellent. Well yeah. done. Well done. That's a good start, <laughs> isn't it? Really, really pleased with it. Like That's what I wanted. And it's just so exciting. With it. But remember, when you've done it yourself, you can't turn around and say it's a load of cod swallop, you know? You've got to be like, well, if I've said it and that person's taken it, you know, I know I'm an honest, genuine person and I'm telling the truth, so... It's real! Gordon Smith is a medium in demand. 
he now travels to London regularly to do private sittings. His home from home in the capital is the historic spiritual mission in Notting Hill. Actually coming up to stay in the church, it was just like coming home. So many of the great mediums have worked here. Everybody who was anybody within spiritualism, mediums that I've read about, it's actually considered a great honour to be invited here to work. Gordon doesn't charge for sittings, but there's a long waiting list. Ros Katanak, who runs the church, is also the keeper of Gordon's diary. He's an excellent medium. He's an honest medium with great integrity, which to me is almost as important as the quality of the mediumship. Well, the two go together, or should, should. As long as he doesn't get spoilt, and I don't think he will get spoilt. And I know he's going to get a few very short kicks from spirit, should he try it, but he won't. He won't. I'm absolutely certain about that. And uh, we are very blessed to have him. Very. Um, you know. Do you get a lot of people then, Russ, will you get for sittings with Gordon? Oh. Yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do indeed. Um, and may, once they know that he's going to be around, yes. And you just have to use your intelligence or what little you've got to uh, sort out the wheat from the chaff. And that's really what it amounts to. I must have a sitting. I do need a sitting. Then you realise that someone's in trouble. Colin and Pat Marr lost their son a year ago. His name was uh, Colin John Marr. Um, he was going home one night, walking across the zebra crossing. A car apparently ran into him, just carried on. So they never found the person? No. His? no. No. He was a school teacher, well loved by his pupils. He ran the um, first year football team at the school. He came footballer himself. Very, very popular, knew absolutely everybody, very enthusiastic, and just so full of life for it, it to have been taken the way it was. In the greater scheme of things, I'm still a Catholic and still believe in Catholicism, but to us, our son, who we really loved, has been taken away from us. If it's God's will, then at the moment, I'm not very friendly with God. Can I just take your hand? Yeah. Gordon says he knows nothing about Colin and Pat, not even their names. I'll do this just to make a, a link. All right. Ah, oh, yeah. Now there's a young man and an older woman, okay? So it's like a boy and his grandmother. Yes. Right. Does the name of John Mayer or John Marr make some mean something to you? Um. That was the second name. All right. John was the second name. All and right. Mara is their surname. Oh, well, if that makes sense, yeah, I'd heard it as John Meir or John Meyer or Mara. something. Right, yeah. okay. Uh, all right, then, come on. Aha, uh -huh, I'll tell her. There's a certain kind of rose or a certain kind of flower That's that you one. give to him. Yes. Yeah. And he says, I know about it, I still get them. He and does. there's one that you put beside a picture as well. That's right. And he says, I'm very aware of that. He's so much around you. And have they indeed? Oh, is it a Hornsley church or a Horns? Hornsley. Horns? Is it yeah. a church? Because I'd heard it is Hornsley Church. Yeah. Or, or Hornsley yeah, no, Church. My, my parents used to live in Hornsley. It's a place called Hornsley. All oh, right. Such a lot of family members around you. Yes. OK? As I mentioned, mother, I've also got to say grandmother. My God, mm. she was a character. This mm. woman could have... I, I don't know what I want to say about her, but I just know you did not mess with this woman. Mm. She was like the leader of the, the yeah. family. Yeah. And she's coming forward at the moment to say that, yes, you're doing the right thing. And she's talking about your family that are still around you. Somebody wanted to stop smoking just the other day, but they thought, oh, I'll try it, but I wouldn't bother. Does that make sense? <laughs> Very much so, well, yeah. I've just given up as we came into this year, and it's oh, killing right. me. So <laughs> if, if you've done it, good. If you've no... I have uh, not yet. Oh, well, you'll do it at some point, or whatever. about it. But again, it's just their way of saying they know your thoughts or they yeah. know your thinking. And, and I have a football, and he's, he's bouncing the ball here, yeah, he's, he's yeah. holding the ball. In fact, he must have just loved 
anything to do with yeah. sport and yeah. football and things like that. He's a fanatic footballer. No, I know you have an Irish accent, but there's yeah. somebody here shouting Paddy, OK? Mm -hmm. Paddy, Paddy, Paddy. There's a guy in the spirit world, Paddy. Yeah. But I've also got to talk about Pat or Patricia as well. So there's Pat as a man and Pat as a woman, mm -hmm. OK? Yeah. Yeah. And I've got to mention both of them here. And there's a real shindig going on over on the other side. There's such a lot of family, I feel. And what they're trying to say to you is, we have your son here. He's OK. He's OK. You've sent out these thoughts. You've been asking so much. What, what are you doing? OK. Bless you. Uh, really? Right, the 15th of May, I've got to say to you, is something, I don't know what it means, yeah, but the 15th of May date. is an important date. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, what are you writing? It's as if he's writing something up. But it's a, I'm on a computer. Yes. Okay. And he, he was typing away here, it's, it's the stuff of his that is still left. His writings, yeah. his stuff oh, yes. that he's yeah. put together. Yeah. There's an essay or there's something yeah. that's actually educational, what he's been studying or what he's been doing. What? I don't know if it's Colin or... Is a name like that? Colin, Colin? was his name. Sorry? Colin was his name. Was that his name? Yeah. Colin. I just heard it whispered, sorry. And thanks for the candles, Mum. Thank you very much, as you said, for the candles, Mum. It means a lot. It's his way of trying to let you know that he's still he's alive. Still here. Yes. Still alive. Oh, yeah, it's very enlightening, yeah. yeah. It's wonderful, cos we know now he is at peace. He's yeah, with his right, grandmother. Yeah, it does give comfort, I must admit. And know. his name, everything, he's, he's got everything spot on. His writing, he was a school teacher. There's a lot of writings, his dissertation. He was in the process of writing a book. All those things, there's nothing he didn't get. He couldn't have known no. the, the things he did know, so... No. I mean, he even got his full name right. Yeah. You know, which is amazing, you know, considering they don't know who you are and never met you before. And... May the 15th is very significant. That was the day his grandmother died, five days before her birthday. And what he said about the shrine, lots of people say to me there's too many candles and too many flowers and at his headstone. And he said, thanks for the candles, Mum. So I know I'm doing the right thing now. It's not a shrine, it's somewhere I can go and find peace with him. So, it's lovely. For some people, one visit to a medium is enough. For others, receiving a spirit message marks the start of a new journey. Come and see us, Dad. Come and see us. It's a year since Greta Rhodes' son, Nigel, died in a car crash. Since his death, she's made regular visits to mediums. Tonight, Greta's favourite psychic is appearing at a nearby town. She's desperate for another message. Come on, sweetheart. Come and see me tonight, won't you? Mm -hmm. I'll be waiting for you. So all I want to know is that he's all right. That he's happy. What do your friends think about it? Well, I think they've all got mixed feelings. Some worry about us going down the wrong path and grasping at straws, I think, is what they see it as. We're grieving and we're grasping at straws, and, and a lot of people think that that's all we're doing it for, is we're looking for something, which, of course, we are. Of course we are. We're looking for Nigel. You know, I'm looking for Nigel. Is it helping you, Greta? It is. Yeah, it's helping me tremendously, yeah. I, I, um, I love to know when, there's, when he's going to be here again, you know, when the medium's going to be here again. I just think, oh, you know, great. And I work towards that date, you know, I'm thinking, oh, great, you know, we're going to see him. And um, it's, it's that, that that keeps me level. It's like somebody who's gone away and you want to hear from them, you know, how they're going on, are they all right, you know. And we know he'll never come back, but it's, it's just that link, it's a link. Victoria Hall in Keith Lake. 
Tonight's medium is Stephen Holbrook. How many of you have never been to anything like this before? Just show me your hands. They'll never come again. <laughs> Greta's husband, Andrew, has joined her for the show. First thing you think about when you sit down is, will he come through? They can feel the excitement around you when you sit down. There are hundreds of people in the hall hoping for the same thing. We've all got the same thing in common, and that is the fact that one day we are going to die. Everybody is grieving. Every funeral you've ever been to, they all talk about the afterlife. We're all in pain and we're all desperate to hear and from our loved ones. You are meant to have blind faith in your religion and believe that one day you will meet your loved one again. Well, that's all very nice, thank you. But what about the typical 40-year-old lady that brings a son up? He disappears from the house at 9 o'clock with a pat lunch or his mum's made him. She's wished him all the best. And at 11.30, she's identifying his body in the morgue. That gentleman wants to tell his mum that he loves her and that he's OK in the next world. Now, you tell me what's wrong with that. OK, so we're going to start. Somebody has just lost their sister. This is going to be a little bit weepy. Can I talk to the lady on the end? It's a telephone link. Now, can you not and we're just anything? hearing their side of things. Yes. That is your sister. And she's just said, I was mad to die. <laughs> OK? You can feel it round your face now, Mum. You just hang on to That's every word that comes that through. And... That's her. Take what we can from it. She just said, Mum, I heard you tell me <laughs> you love me. And I heard you say, I can't believe you're dead. I'm going to tell you something. <coughs> You've been sorting out through them socks. Do you understand? You threw them away today, so it's about bloody time. <laughs> Somebody lost their husband round there, please. Wilson. Come on, Nigel, come on, come on. Quickly, put your hand up if you know what I'm talking about, please. God bless. Can I talk to you, love? My love, I've got to bring a joint of roast lamb. Not beef, lamb. Do you live in a three-bedroomed house? You know, Chicago brought that, um... Is it Chicago? I really want to tell you I'm sorry. 17th of December. It always comes through as head injuries. <laughs> One. Brilliant. He always says severe. Severe head injuries. Anybody else? 17th of December. He's not going to come. He's not going to come. Right. <clears throat> Somebody lost their son to the spirit world. Yeah. Come on, Nigel. Come on. Yeah. Come on, love. You can do it. Well, can I have your voice, love? Yes. Mum, he's just said you all felt... Can I be honest? Yeah. Crap. Yeah. I'm not going to change him because he's, he's rough around the edges. Yeah. And that's why you loved him. Yeah. And you've still kept me jacket. And you've been... It just proves you can't expect anything, can you? He's busy doing something else tonight. Yeah. <laughs> well, come again. Come again. Can you, you see him again in is it December? See yeah, Stephen's coming to the Spiritualist Church in Otley in December, so we're going there. See him there. See comes to the Yeah, we'll find him. <laughs> yeah. That feeling never goes as a mother. That feeling of wanting to know if your child is all right. This is our way of knowing that he is okay. He's sending us messages to reassure us that he is all right. You trust that they are still alive. You trust that you too will not die. And that is the great message of mediumship. Someone very close to me who died suddenly. I know there is life after death. The people on the earth are the ones that need to be reassured. All I know is 
that when I do my job and when I help them to get that peace of mind, they're sure. Mediums say they comfort the bereaved, but can their spirit messages harm the grieving process? Greta and Andrew are visiting their bereavement counsellor at the local hospital. So do you believe we can make contact with the spirit world? No. No, I don't. I suppose I've spent my life conferencing life's awful realities, and there's no answer to it. Did we um, find the identity of that? The man that came in in the middle of the night. We have to live with not being able to make sense of everything. What I'm wondering is, you know, you talked about um, going to the medium. Mm. Is that another way of um, trying to find him? I suppose it is. Yeah. Yes, it is. It's confirming to us that he's, he is with us in spirit, and we know now from the number of times he's come through that it, he's trying to tell us that. I'm still with you. Mm, yeah. What I'm trying to understand is if that stops you from leaving him. I don't know, really. Um, that, I'm thought to be like that. It's, it's, it's difficult, really. You find it more difficult than I do, don't I? Yeah. But it sounds like you're saying to me that there is a time when you have to stop looking. Yes, I suppose. Well, there must be. It's got to be, I suppose, but uh, we don't know when that is, but uh, we think that we might just know when it arrives, really, when we... It's a pain I've never had before. I wouldn't wish it on anybody. You need some rest from some of that, don't you? And I think there's a, a conflict, because having a rest from it suggests you're leaving him, doesn't it? Yeah. So well, there's got to be a way of keeping as much of him as you can, but your life not being ruined by it, really. Mediums claim they see the dead as well as hear their voices. For Gordon Smith, mediumship began in childhood. Quite bizarre coming back here and remembering, I suppose, one of the, the first experiences I ever had of seeing Spirit. A friend of the family who was called Ami, uh, that was his nickname, he came walking towards me from the other end of the street. I kept telling me he was in Dalbeth, I'm in Dalbeth, I'm in Dalbeth. And I didn't know what that meant. And I went dashing down the path into my mother, running in and telling her I just saw Ami, and she was furious, and she sent me back out playing again. Get back out, get back out. Stop imagining things. And it was only later that I learned that they had buried Ami in Dalbeth Cemetery in Glasgow, a week or so earlier. Gordon's grown up to become known as Britain's most accurate medium. Up to the middle house, it's as though I'm going up. He's talking about teaching. I'm a teacher. Good, there you go. Blind medium Sharon Neal began talking to dead souls when she started school. When I was only five, I used to wake up and hear people talking to me. I didn't realize what they were saying or who they were, and it was quite frightening. I started hearing voices and seeing pictures. It was as if I was part of the event that was taking place, the part of the event that was being described. It was almost as if I was transported back to that time. I now know that what I was experiencing was not something that everybody else experienced. Sharon says the voices now help her contact spirits, both wanted and unwanted. He really isn't aggressive at all, even though he seems like it to you. Husband and wife mediums Craig and Jane Hamilton Parker believe they're coming together 
awakened the dead. Bright lights appearing in the middle of the room. Do you remember that? Brilliant ball of light that bounced around the room, spanged the door. It was my aura, I yeah. think. You I mean, so I think, dazzled by yeah, me. Yeah, I think, but... <laughs> you were <laughs> dazzled. <laughs> oh, great. It was a highly strange experience. Um, I had my foot tickled at the bottom of my bed. Craig and Jane are now passing on their psychic gift to a new generation of trainee know. mediums. I mean, if there's any spirits here, I would have said there's a spirit of a woman. Could you roll your sleeve up, Gordon? I'm going to put on this blood pressure machine. Gordon's growing reputation as an accurate medium has led to work with psychical researchers like Trish Robertson. It makes contact with your head and it gives me off your brain waves. <laughs> Trish carries out investigations into all things paranormal. It's the most important question we can ask. Do we survive physical death? Do our personalities and intellects survive? Good afternoon. May I press the blood pressure monitor on Gordon? Gordon seems to be able to tap into some other consciousness and impart information that he couldn't normally know. What he can do is definitely unexplained. Do you believe yourself that there is a spirit world that we go somewhere else after we die? It's not a matter of belief, it's a matter of evidence. I always say I will only deal in evidence. And I've had many cases of people, for example, who have spoken to someone during, during a particular day, had a conversation, discovered a day or two later that person had actually died. And I'm talking about credible witnesses. These things happen. Trish wants Gordon to help investigate ghostly goings-on at a local pub. But first, she needs to find out more from the landlord. I understand you have a, a paranormal phenomena in the building? Yes, there's like noises or bumps in the night, whichever way you'd want to put uh -huh. it. Um, there's been uh, quite a few witnesses to noises coming through the ceiling actually hearing the noises in yeah, the ceiling yeah. and it was a dragon noise as if it was a big table no. being dragged. There was actually four staff in it at the one time right. and all heard it together. I definitely heard footsteps up there. Can you give me an idea of roughly how many footsteps you think you I heard? I don't know. I didn't wait to count. No, but I mean, was it like no. two, three, four, oh, five? Oh, it was three or four. Three or four. Uh -huh. Would you say there were heavy footsteps? Like a man or a woman or a child? I would say it was an adult. You would say it was an adult. Aye. David thought that me and Eddie were like, tapping the side of the bar. So me and Eddie stuck our hands up right away, and then that was it. The three years were freaked out then. Mm -hmm. When people report a feeling of presence, it's very important as a psychical researcher to listen to what the people have to say. You will often find that the biggest skeptics are the people who have not investigated a single case in their life. I get actually a bit scared and stuff about it because mm. you don't really want to believe in stuff like that. If I can take you through and show you where right. everything's been happening okay. first. Then it's actually an area upstairs. Right. Not the easiest thing in the world, is it? Athelhampton House in Dorset is another building with a ghostly story to tell. Craig Hamilton Parker and his group of trainee mediums are planning a psychic investigation. Student Christine Forster has been training for the job all week. Her super skeptic husband Dave is minding the kids. Yeah, sometimes I'll just say to Dave, I'm going upstairs for half hour, so he knows to leave me alone. I'll just come up and light my candles, light my incense, and just relax and open up and see if I get anything. Just practice. I think it's just a way of getting some peace and quiet, you know, away from the kids. Um, it's up to her, you know. <laughs> If I can find a way out of getting away from the kids for five minutes, it's going to be fine. <laughs> Dad! I want a normal life. The whole 
spiritual side of everything fascinates me. Sometimes you can feel as if somebody's gently touching you. And you're thinking, oh, someone's touching me, someone's touching me. You know, and quite often, if you, you think, oh, no, it wasn't, and you ask for it again, you'll quite often get the, the touch again. So quite often you feel the touch. You can sense someone's there. Back at the Glasgow pub, a paranormal investigation is underway. Floorboard's missing. Wow. Look at that old space. There's quite a, what I would call an atmosphere here. We will be getting out instruments and we can actually measure this, but to me, there's like a column of it's, cold it's always, it's always, energy. Yeah, it's always funny. There's never really actually a draft, but it's always freezing, just run about just, here whenever it you was walk like walk, it. it was like walking into it and mm -hmm. walking out of it again. Want to try that, David? You might not feel it, it might just be me. Do I feel you it? Feel it? Yeah. The dragging sound and the knocking sound that I was talking about uh -huh. is actually from about here. Ah. And how's the temperature, David? The temperature's down to 13.6. It's dropped rapidly from about 16. In a short time, that's good evidence. It's, it's uh, rapidly dropping. Do you believe in ghosts? A healthy respect. A healthy respect, I think. Have you got any theories yourself as to a family it could be connected to, or um, a name, or...? Yes. Uh, there's several families that were here for at least three or four generations. There was the Waddle family from about 1800 through to the 1870s. And then there was the Reed family, who was here... What? I just got a big shiver there. <laughs> a big shiver that did scare me there. Can we go back down? <laughs> What, when you mentioned that family's oh, name? Oh, the family read. Oh, no, yeah, it's just actually strange. God, I've never experienced that before. Really? Yeah, I've never experienced it quite like that. I don't know, did you not feel anything? No. No, maybe it's just me being paranoid then. There's an actual anomaly there in the photograph, which could be an orb. That's directly above where that chair and set of boots are. Some people say it's dust, it could be energy. There's no scientific proof of what it may be. But clearly, there's something strange come up in the photograph. Craig and his development circle are en route to their haunted house. They're going to stay there overnight. The mystic bus. Are you scared, Christine? You're scared of the dark, aren't you? Is that mist outside or the window steamed? <laughs> it's ectoplasm, folks. <laughs> so, um, we're going to look at uh -huh. uh, What have we got? Oh, look, oh. it's a manor house. It's, oh, 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 look at this. Wow. Now, that does <laughs> look... Oh, it does look old and it does look scary. <laughs> Just the business. I don't think I'm going to sleep there. <laughs> There's something glowing here. Athelhampton is said to be haunted by a grey lady and a pet ape. Recently, the mistress of the house has experienced other strange goings on. I certainly have had very definite experiences here. I would just like to see whether the, the things that I'm experiencing, in particular areas of the house particularly, um, whether, whether what I'm feeling is, is, is genuinely a presence or whether it's me <laughs> going mad. This could be good. Get any immediate impressions? <laughs> Probably got secret passageways and underground caverns and who knows what. Perfect. If I show you to your rooms, so we've got two sisters, I understand, and they're sleeping at this end of the house. Oh, my God, he is going to be so scary. <laughs> oh, baby, I know. Oh, my God, I really don't want to. 
This room used to be where the manorial court used to happen. And there's an old story that they used to hang the people from the beam in there through the trap. Oh, no! no. Oh, that was a hot flush. Oh, my goodness, it's not even dark yet. Gordon has arrived at the Thistle Inn to try and solve the mystery of the ghostly footsteps. It's almost like memories. I'm being pulled to where there's, I don't know, there's an activity around here of some kind. I can hear things. Whispering voices, but it's not spirit, it's like ghostly voices. They're memories. As you come in. Ah! Yeah. I don't know why, but this area, it's kind of, I was in front of the fireplace, but I was drawn, I don't know, to the side about. Which side, Gordon? Kind of my, my right hand side. Okay. Okay, yeah. that's, yeah. that's where I, almost, well, there's a chair there, but I couldn't sit on it, but I felt around this okay. area there was a, a really strong atmosphere at first. Mm -hmm. I heard voices. Male, female. There was two names called out. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's the same name or right. if, it's, if it's a first and last name or two different names. Mm -hmm. But it was Jimmy Reed. Jimmy. Jimmy. Reed. Jimmy. Reed. 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 Shall we wander over here and see if there's anything? Mm. Yeah, it's very difficult when you're standing here and there are people around you. And opening myself up as a medium, I mean, immediately I start picking up people's relatives, well, which are not relative to this building. So you uh -huh. can go, go uh -huh. away. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and there is a relevance somewhere to a fireplace, but it's that one. Mm -hmm. The more I look at this, the more no, I've got to go back to that fireplace. Something is not right about that fireplace. Mm -hmm. They're showing me it back as it would have been. And that's not how they remember it. You say you're picking up names, but just say them anyway in case that they're relevant. OK. The other name I heard was Lizzie, but there was a Mac set, and I wasn't sure if it was McCutcheon or Macaulay or something like that. Just something It's a name Macaulay that means something to the landlord. James Reed was actually a gentleman that owned the place between the 1880s and 1950s, but the fact he mentioned a Lizzie, a Lizzie, it's actually Liz, Liz MacDonald was the wife of the owner that had it before us, and he died the other year. Um, so it's interesting that that was mentioned. It was actually a relative of mine. So I've actually got relatives that had the place for the last 30 odd years. Strange. There's two, there's, I think there's balls of light in my head, eh? <laughs> um, and it's funny, the fireplace he's talking about, when we're downstairs in the lounge bar, the fireplace that's in there was actually taken from, in, from that space just a year and a half ago. And we actually cleaned it up and the, the, to the tiles and everything that's there, as you can see just now. So that's an original fireplace that was probably put in by those people back in the 1880s. So the, it's, it's really kind. I, I'm enjoying this. <laughs> Great stories to tell around the bar. <laughs> and it's a sense of... Like that, as though right. somebody has either experienced a feeling of somebody walking up here from downstairs when there's been nobody up here. Just a sense of... But it's just... Honestly, it's, it's like an etheric... I don't know. I, I mean, I don't know the term for it. There's, there's something left over from the past. There's no spirit behind it that wants revenge or no. says, get out of my house. There's nothing like oh. that. Just a wee Glasgow ghost. <laughs> <laughs> They're all right. They're OK. They do not have an active ghost Portuguese, call it what you will. It's merely energies of the past, happy memories that are left over as a residue in this place. Just hearing that really did just knock me for six. Absolutely knock me for six. With him mentioning um, a family name, it's just really brought all this out in me. It's, it's stuff that, that, that I'm just really speaking of feelings just now. Um, I, I really don't know what it is. Well, calm down in a minute and I'll start talking sensible again. Well, if I've ever talked sensible in the past. But uh, it's, it's something I'm not used to. I think I would feel a 
like a woman would look over me here. It's not a male room. It's a room that was loved by a woman. Yeah, spooky you, isn't it? Yeah. A window. I picked up some stuff from um, Princess. And um, when I was at home, a young princess. But she was like sort of um, um, pushed out of the family or something. And uh, I picked something up there. This was before I came here in mind, so I don't know if I got something to do with this. Mm. Get some activity around the um, dressing table. Like someone used to powder themselves in the mirror and that. I'm paying a lot of attention to this at the moment as well. I think you know, there's some history behind this. Phil thinks he's had a premonition, something he wrote down about the house before arriving here. Phil was saying about he'd had a premonition of um, peacock feathers and a princess, you yeah, said there. Yeah, and and right in there. his room there, we've got peacock feathers next to a sort of um, dress-like thing which looks yeah. like a princess. So you've had a little bit of what we call go. remote viewing there, Phil. Yeah. So you've written it down. Yeah. I've got lots of other stuff in there. I think it's premonition too, like, you know. Mm. Sh show them the, the peacock feathers. Yeah, right, come and see <laughs> the peacock feathers. <laughs> you can prove it. Oh, look, you've got, look, you've got a princess's a... dress, if that's ever, I've ever seen one. And peacock feathers. Peacock feathers. So peacock. you're getting tuned into it in advance. That's why we have this advanced clairvoyance. Yeah. Because you're already linked to it prior yeah. to us even getting here. Yeah. So I, I think that's a pretty good start. Back at the Hamilton Parkers family home near Southampton, Jane is preparing for a visit from a regular client. Before reading, I just like playing some music to get me in the right frame of mind. I really enjoy dancing around doing my housework to Marilyn Monroe because it gets me in the mood and it's happy. It's a happy mood. This is my room, which I like to think as my spiritual room. And I like to think of it as a little sanctuary for everybody that comes. It doesn't matter who they are. From a doctor, to a lawyer, to a laptop, to a celebrity, I like to treat them all the same. And I like to get this room nice for everybody because I'd like to go into a clean house. As my grandmother would say, cleanliness next to godliness. And you do see people more than once? I do have a, a very big, strong following. And people like to feel they can come back to me two or three times. Perhaps there might be a few years in between. I'm the nearest thing in connection to their loved ones. And I'm very privileged that I can bring those two worlds together. The next reading I'm going to do is a girl that has come to me over the years and I predicted that she would meet her future husband and I'm glad to say this has happened and I'm thrilled for her. Hello. 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 Thank you. Recently, Sunny's been coming for readings more often, looking for contact with the spirit of her best friend. I've got uh, a young lady and I've got Jo coming through and she's right. giving the thumbs up and really excited and that and she's just touching mm -hmm. your necklace okay. there and mm -hmm. saying don't be sad, don't right. be sad because I wasn't a sad person no. when I was here and I know you miss me and we had great fun mm -hmm. together. You and I will always be friends, she's saying. Right. And mm -hmm. that because I'm still grieving. Yeah. I wanted to tell her I was sorry and that I I wasn't there for her. I wished I'd tried harder. We shared secrets together mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was lovely. And just to tell her that I missed her and I loved her. And I just hope she's okay. She's 
I remember very clearly the last night I saw Joe alive. It had been my birthday and I'd been in Southampton for a night out. I'd come home and I'd bumped into her as I was going to get a kebab. And um, she looked very preoccupied, um, upset. And she asked if I would come around and see her the next day. Um, she really needed to speak to me. And I said, OK. I left her in the kebab shop and that's the last time I saw her. That night, Jo was murdered by her boyfriend. Did she want to stay over that night? I just never know. Never know what she wanted to tell me. Maybe she could have come back to my boyfriend's flat, stayed the night with us, and this wouldn't have happened. It's just loads of if onlys. And it is, consumes me with guilt. Today, Sally's booked another reading with Jane. This time, Joe's sister is going too. I've been really worried about it for you, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? So I'm more respect. nervous for you going to this reading than I was for going to mm. mine, so... No. I've never even been, like, no. witness to one or anything no, like that, no. so I don't really know what to expect. But I have got a few things in my head that I think, well, she says that, that's going to really yeah. convince me. And I've bought a couple of things along with me as well, oh, right. so, that, which I've got on my person. Right. So, so she I don't want to say what that is, but, yeah, yeah she so says... Yeah, so she mentions yeah. them, then you'll think, mm. yes. Mm. I just really, really want it to happen, but yeah. sometimes you want it too much, can't you? And mm. then mm. you can make it all sort of fit, and maybe it doesn't. Mm. If you're there, you know, come for me. For me, this is probably the most active part of the house. It seems strange now because it's so sort of light and friendly, but in the evening it gets very, you know, there's something quite strange about it here. It definitely feels like there's somebody up here. I've heard that piano just play one note on its own. It just feels like there's somebody, particularly in this part here, just standing watching. It's the only way I can explain it. I'm not that comfortable with this part of the house. This is the door where I saw the handle rattling, and it was just, well, it was just kind of going backwards and forwards like this. This is um, just a plain corridor, and yet, oddly, this is one of the areas of the house that I've experienced most of um, the, the presence, and I've had uh, my shoulder touched here. This is where the children sleep. I don't know, it seems almost as though it's drawn to the children, so I would be quite interested to see what the psychics make of that. Keep tuned in like we are, and we're going to go to a few spots around the house and see what we can feel. I felt her around last night and so excited as well because, um, unfortunately for me, Craig woke me up and said I was snoring. <laughs> I found, couldn't get back to sleep afterwards, and I felt very much as if Joe was trying to reach out to you. OK. All right. All right, darling, take your time. I feel as if she's making a link with us, and I feel very much as if she's so happy that you've come. Really, really happy. But, of course, it's sad for you under these circumstances. All right. Talking about looking after a little boy. Would you understand that? Yeah, yeah. Yes. OK. All right. Just when her life was going right for her, then this happened, and it's as if life's so unfair. That's what she's saying. All right. Who's, who's, has this child had a cold or something? Because I don't know why she's coming with a bottle of medicine. Oh, yeah, he was ill last weekend. He's, All right, he's had a cold, but he's been ill. Yeah. All right, because she's just come in with some medicine there for him mm. to let you know that she's aware what's happening. Mm. OK. Now, she's putting, like, a choke around her neck here. Would you understand that? 
Yeah, this was Joe's. Well, that was her choker. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing, because she's just bought a choker and putting it there. Okay. And why is she putting her hand on your stomach there? Um... Um, I'm pregnant. Oh, wonderful. Because you're just putting the congratulations. New beginnings. Mm. There's some tissues there behind us. <laughs> I mean, new beginnings and joyous times. Though through sadness, goodness comes. You're never going to forget this girl. <laughs> All right, darling. I'll bring some shoes around for you girls <laughs> as well. <laughs> Holding up shoes. Would you understand that? I'm not sure. No. All right, someone's been looking at shoes. Me. <laughs> someone who's she's holding up her shoes. I just bought about three pairs. Oh bless! Because she's got these <laughs> shoes she's holding up here. What does Salsi mean to you? Salsi. Yes. Um, not not. Does a lot, it mean really. anything to you, Sally? Salsi. Show me the sea. I used to have meetings there, but... That's good not, enough. Yeah, I do nicely. There. There's a memory <laughs> link. Yeah. Because show me the sea and that. And then I've got the fairground. She's talking about Portsmouth. Would you understand that? I don't know, really. About her friend that came from Portsmouth. Yeah, she's the gospel she's from. Yeah. Mm. All the same area, because yeah. not far away, because she's showing water that would link with Portsmouth, mm. wouldn't it? See, I've got her in a black dress in the spirit world, as if she's just going out dancing. She's a little bit loud on the other side, I've got to say, because I've got to say, be quiet. <laughs> Would you understand? Yeah. Who has a piece of her hair, please? I've got a piece. Oh, right. There's three of us, my mum, oh, my dad and me. I was going to say three, because mm. it's snipping bits of hair. Yeah. There. Right. I thought I heard someone calling him Graham. Does Graham mean anything? Yeah, that's my stepdad. I got like flashes going in front of her and last sorts with her family. Very kind girl, she didn't want to upset you or go into like that image how she was found. Yes. Because she said she didn't want that memory to be there. She wants to be remembered, she's saying, as Joe. Joe. Right. So what did you think? Um, yeah, there were some things that were quite spooky that she got spot on, yeah. I was mm. quite impressed, yeah. I would say, yeah. I've got, um, I've got, hang on. <laughs> I've got a lock of Joe's hair in my pocket, and she said about a lock of hair, so that was pretty mm, impressive. Necklace. And the choker, yeah, I mean, this is Joe's choker, and I wore it, obviously, specifically, hoping that she would pick up on that. And, um, obviously, I'm pregnant, I haven't told it, well, my mum knows, but I haven't <laughs> told Sally, you didn't mm, know, I haven't really told know. anybody, so I was really pleased about that, because Joe would have been really happy for us, so... Yeah, pretty impressive. <laughs> <laughs> Did you feel that was her? Yeah, I mean, I think she was there, yeah. I definitely think she was there. And she she did get a spot on, her personality, and just the way she was with mm. the drink and the cigarette and everything. Yeah. I mean, that's mm. Joe. That was Joe all over, so... Yeah. <laughs> down here, I want to show if your head fits steps up here. Yes. It's like there's somebody just almost like a soldier. I can't, no, I don't think it's a soldier more. It's like, um... Okay. Yeah. It's a picture up there. That's it. Oh, my God, that is exactly what I can see. Someone's scared. I feel like someone might have even hidden in here. What do you think? Um, I don't know, in a way. I, I was, I, perhaps I was expecting some more dramatic results. I was thought they were going to sort of say, oh, yes, there's some X, Y, or Z, and this area. They're kind of picking up on atmospheres, which I would pick up on. Perhaps the whole thing of coming here today, the sort of appearance of the building and everything, is kind of throwing them out a bit. I think they're not very focused at the moment. Around here, hmm. you right, see okay. something, don't you? Yeah, yeah, it's over time. If I get the shutters here. Yeah, I've just had that. Have you? Back of my neck, yeah. Two things here that's happened to you. Murder and suicide. 
Oh my Wrong goodness, I have no, no? idea. Oh. No. I'll just say to you, this is probably one has of the Has there been a fire here? In this house, there has There's been. been fire. Has it burnt here? This part been burnt? Above, yes, yeah. Because I feel, I think what you're picking up here is if the fire was up there, whoever was here, for some reason, couldn't get into that room where the children were. Do you want to go up? Yes, yeah, let's have a look at the next part. All this part was completely gutted. But there weren't people up here that died in the no, fire. No, no. But there were people below that were feeling the fear of the fire. Yes. The people that were there left warning signals. And now when we walk by, we sense those energies. Yeah. Hazard light from the old primordial brain. Mm. I don't think it's a ghost. Energy-wise, what do we feel? Heat. Yeah. And it does that's feel warm up here, doesn't back it? In my head, yeah. But the heating's on. But so the heating's on, so we feel is. that naturally, where the rest <laughs> of the house is a bit cold. <laughs> Has anybody seen sort of like what in we call orbs, like light yeah, balls? Yeah, in this room I've seen light. So you've been yeah. seeing light, you have seen yeah, light Yeah, I've seen balls. light. Because we call them orbs, you know, yes, they're like I've sort of um, raw energy. I actually think the energy might come from you. But then that means that it's all in my mind. No, or it's in your energy field. No, you Oh, really? I would say that the energy here is generally very friendly. Yeah. Like any old house, it has many What's things from the past, and we've been picking up, I feel, on the memory of the place. Where's the light switches? I don't know, but we're not turning them off, so it don't matter. OK. I think they're coming on all right. It's silly. I, they should never feel fear with these things, really. I mean, if you're going to be a medium, the last thing in the world you want if a medium comes to visit a haunted house is the medium to be going, oh, my God, you know? I mean, mediums are there to reassure. And, uh, well, you just wait yeah. till tonight. I'm sure there'll be the grey lady at the end of your bed. I'd love to see it. I also felt there was a man that was beheaded walking around, no head. Oh, come on. <laughs> I did. <laughs> no. I did. You see too many movies. No, I didn't. As well as contacting spirits, mediums are sometimes asked to send unwanted ones away. Ben Hudson lives at home with his mother Susie. He believes he's been possessed by a dead soul. His problems began five years ago when he bought a book about the occult. In September 1999, I bought a book on the devil. A few days later, I experienced a kind of apparition in the flat, which um, I imagined to be the devil or a satanic apparition. Ben believes the apparition was a passed-on spirit playing tricks, a spirit that has now attached itself to him. After an experiment with mediumship, um, which was a mistake, the same passed on soul actually caused a, the, what has been a possession or a persistent psychic interference uh, experience for me uh, by um, interfering with me in this room and causing a, uh, a constant disturbance since that evening. Although dabbling with mediumship got Ben into trouble, he's turned to Sharon Neal for help. Sharon lives and works in Belfast. I have started reading books on the other side and find them reassuring, but... She's agreed to give Ben a series of healing sessions. Tonight, he's travelling with his mother to her house. It has completely taken over Ben's life. You know, I mean... Ben is Ben still, but, um, you know, he's totally influenced by what's happening to him, and therefore it means that he can't really be himself or lead his life in the way that he would have wanted to have done. I'm hoping, really, that Sharon is going to um, be able to give me back the uh, freedom from this kind of problem. I can do my best to help him get rid of it. I am not going to make guarantees. I never make guarantees about anything. But I cannot see any reason why 
it won't work. Hi, yes. Oh, great to meet you. Hi, how are you? How are you doing? Give us when the healing begins, Sharon will summon up her spirit team for help. A group of passed on souls who've been communicating with her since childhood. I seen to your right hand side a gentleman, he, he would be about five foot six, five foot seven. He seems to be feeding from your energy. And it's almost like having a bully, really. This has to be detached, but I also need to know that you can trust what I'm doing. Because if you've any concerns or any problems, now is the time to tell me, all right? Okay. Usually, even if I'm not in contact with you, my team will be, and, and they will uh, keep me informed. But after all he's been through, contact with more dead people makes Ben nervous. What is going to happen after that? I think there needs to be a sort of um, ceasing of the contact, you know, because I don't think it's healthy. You feel that people who are on this side of life and people who have passed over should not communicate? Yeah, I do. Really think OK. That, yeah. Well, that's entirely understandable. And I would say that it, it's very... Um, a kind of a sick thing, really. And, and that's what I believe about all mediumship experience. I have to break. I, I, need, I, need, I need a few seconds. I need a minute on myself. Yeah. I have to break. Yeah. Things have got off to a bad start. Sharon is deeply offended by Ben's comments. Sharon, I just wanted to say um, I'm really sorry. I just, I don't know if you got my point, but if what I was saying was I'm very grateful and I'm very happy and uh, pleased to be working with you. I, I can't, I can't handle this, you know, I mean the fact is I didn't choose to do this. I mean it wasn't something that I planned and I am not... Yeah, exactly, to... why Sorry, I'm questioning I the not... integrity of your team oh, because no, they no. forced they didn't on force you. Anything. No, well, you started no. to get voices when you were a young person that you didn't want, you thought you were going mad, they, nobody does? introduced yourself, themselves to you, they, it was extremely rude and disrespectful of your team they, to start a communication with you uh, in the first place. The, the, and they did it completely it without choice. integrity. It was my choice. The, no, it was I not want. your choice. They forced communication on you, Sharon, didn't they? Yeah, I wouldn't call it force. And it was my choice later on in life as to whether I wanted to carry on with it or not. I see the point that he's making. I do see the point he's making. And I can understand why Sharon is upset by it. Um, but I just hope at the end of the day that it will sort itself out because I don't want her to be offended and upset because she's very sweet and she's very kind to be doing this for them. Well, I can't do anything for you. I can't. I, how am I supposed to help you whenever you are... Well, there's nothing wrong with me just firstly stating that I'm very grateful and happy for your team yes, to I, help I know, me. But... Can you let me finish? I'm very grateful for your team to help me and I very much need their help. After a cooling off period, Sharon tells Ben the argument was started by his evil spirit, making mischief. It wasn't you, it was him making it seem like you were against me for what I was trying to do for you. Can you understand me? Uh, that's not right. Yeah. Well, I know it's not right from yeah, your point but of view. I mean, I would just say that I was actually just stating a point of view Listen, about medium things. Again, it's happening again. That, that I ben, believe in. Ben. No, but I, I, Sharon, hang on a sec. Yeah. I, I agree with you, but I actually do. After more time out, Ben finally agrees to go ahead. Do you think he's still with you? Um, yeah, yeah, he is actually. And what's he doing? And what's he, what's he, what's he trying to do? Um, just as usual, doing sort of connecting my thumb to my finger, mm -hmm. uh, connecting a pulse and sort of um, mm -hmm. securing his, his... I'm aware of that, and that's something I'm yeah. going to work on in a minute, OK? Yeah. That's why I ask you, because I knew that there was activity going on on this side here. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't see him. But I could feel him. I, I find it quite hard to believe that this is what can happen, that dead souls can attach themselves to human beings. But I'm sure that that probably is the case. Um, from a religious point of view, from my point of view, you know, I am a Catholic and I am obviously therefore a believer in God and a believer in Jesus. And therefore I've prayed about everything. It's so strange. He really isn't aggressive at all, even though he seems like it to you. Really? Mm-hmm. 
But I'm certainly not being taken off my guard. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. But he can't go to the left hand side of you because there are I just two trust in God that on your left. that what what is going to happen is going to be the right thing. By this time tomorrow night, I think he um, probably will find that it is going to be daft to try and resist him. Okay. Each time I do the treatment with you, he actually will weaken. Some say it's dangerous to try and talk to the dead. The people who visit mediums are risking their emotional well-being. Greta Rhodes is mourning the death of her son, Nigel, and for the past year has made regular visits to mediums. Anybody with tall, dark head with a baseball cap, my eyes definitely go to them. For a moment, the hope is there that it is Nigel. And I linger, you know, I linger on the faces. And then I can know it's not Nigel, no. Sometimes it can just be a voice. Somebody's just said something in the same way he would say it, in the same broad Yorkshire accent. And that's just how he said it. You're always thinking it, it's a bad dream. Tomorrow we'll wake up and he'll be here. Longing to see him. I don't know whether it'll ever go. Yeah, it's always there. Greta says she uses mediums as a way of keeping in contact with her son, but it's been suggested she may be getting hooked. It is frowned on by quite a few people, and or thinks we're playing with the devil. But um, until you've lost somebody very close. You really can't say. But all we know is that we thought they were on the way home. Nigel tried to overtake a car, but lost control. But his spirit's there. Oh, it's here, it's with us. And we've had that proof. Three times now we've had the proof that he's with us. And that keeps me going. Since Nigel's funeral, Greta has stayed away from her old church. The vicar's heard she's been seeing mediums, and he's concerned about what she might be getting into. We would strongly discourage people from being involved with, with mediums and going to see them, because you don't know what you're getting yourself into. I fear the danger of it. So what is the danger of it? Well, what do you see as the danger? Well, the, 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 there is a spirit world, but there is, uh, we don't know enough about it. Is it safe? Mm. And I certainly believe very strongly in the power of evil, and oh, therefore, yes. you know, evil in the spiritual realm, and therefore how do we protect ourselves against that? I mean, you put an awful lot of trust, I guess, in the medium. Yes. And, you know, I, I, I respect those as people of integrity. Um, but you can also come across all sorts of mediums. Yes. You know, I, I guess oh, yes. poor ones, but also ones who would lead you astray. And obviously there is a whole history of, of that happening. Um, and so this sense of knowing a little bit about the spiritual world, I find a bit frightening. I've never been scared once at any of these meetings mm. by what's come through. Because the, your, your belief in what you're hearing is so great, because you know that the, the information that's coming back to you mm. is accurate. I think the church says, you know, this is, uh, this is something which, uh, like fire, you can get burned. You know, don't, don't, don't play here with fire. The mm. um, spirit world is made by God, but it's actually not for us to be delving into. Um, mm. I think that's why the church would say, would advise people to, um, to stay clear. It has to be in your way and in your time, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe we could come here and and have a service like that here, maybe yes. with one or two friends and have that sense of, yes. of that unity and, 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 and do it here if you'd like to, because you know, we yeah. do bring do communion to people's yeah. homes and perhaps as part of a stepping stone, mm. that might be helpful. Yeah.
Do you still have your faith? Yes, it's it, it's still there, although it's there are times when I question it. Why did they have to go? But there's no answer. Not a sensible answer. And going to the spiritualist churches has just given us some peace that we need. Some peace to keep going. But despite the warnings, Greta plans to see Scottish medium Gordon Smith in London for a private sitting. Ben has now returned home to Brighton. He feels his healing sessions with Sharon have made a big difference. I think the turning point came when I went to Belfast uh, to see Sharon. It actually was a breakthrough. I'm now certainly on the path to recovery. You know, I'm feeling altogether very confident that within the next six to eight months, I'm going to be free of the problem. Mm. And uh, um, working with Sharon to do that is really saving grace for me. She's taken a weight off my shoulders. I feel quite normal. Because he's been through so many times now, I can't imagine that he wouldn't come through especially on a one-to-one. -one. He's eager, obviously, to be in touch with us and to reassure us that he is with us. Greta and her husband, Andrew, are traveling to London for their sitting with Gordon. You still have that longing to see him. But we won't get that. So hearing him is the next best thing. Gordon says he knows nothing about Greta and Andrew, not even their names. You can just come right. over and have a seat. OK. Um, nice to you. You just have a seat. Thank and you. tell me nothing at the moment. Uh, that's why I don't really want to no, we understand get any that. conversation. It's better for you if I get you evidence, of you know. It is, yes. Uh, I don't really... Have you had a setting before? Yes. Right, so you know what to expect. Yes. Yeah. I mean, at worst, that will become a conversation, we'll have a chat. Yes. Yeah. And I will know very quickly uh, whether I've established a communication mm -hmm. or not. Mm -hmm. Can I just take one of your hands? Sometimes I do this, uh, and it's just through impression, sometimes I need to hold somebody's hand. Yeah. Sometimes I don't. And uh, there are times I just do this to get maybe a, a sense or a vibration from the person. OK. <laughs> All right, yeah, as soon as I take your hand, there's a young man just coming in like this. All right. What's the name? All right. Andrew? I've got to shout Andrew. Who's Andrew? Mr. He's just shouting Andrew, Andrew, Andrew. Where are you taking me? All right. He's taking me immediately. Very, very active, very fast mind, this, this young man. Quite, you know, dynamic. I feel really warm. If he comes into a room, you know he's in a room. Bang. OK, where are you taking me here? I'm going out to the countryside with him, though. Um, I don't know if I'm in hills or... Uh, sort of moors, but uh, I'm not in Scottish rugged hills. I'm in rolling, no. mm. you know, hills like the Dales, That's basically. OK, he's yes. taking me up the Dales. Uh, happy birthday, Mum, he's saying, yes, OK? thank you. And I don't know if it's Margaret or Margarita, but there's a name like that that's been said, G Margareta? I'm right, no. No, 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 no. no. no, no. It's, it certainly sounds like Margaret. I wouldn't Margaret, change it to no. Margaret. I was just... Um, I have a connection with Rita, Gre Greta? Greta? Greta, Greta, that's me. Are you right, Greta? Yes. Well, I thought it was Margarita. Oh, but he's, of course, he's explaining I didn't get that connection. Yes, of course. Okay. Anyway, but it, I just get this lovely sense of him very, very close to you just now. And he's shown me here, all oh, right, don't, we don't need to do that. There are so many times you've gone over how he died. Why did that? And it's just as though you, there's this constant picture, this constant torture. And he said, stop doing that. You've got to stop looking at how he actually went to the spirit world. You're never going to change it. And it's, mm-hmm, 
Oh, all right, bless you. There's a motor car he's shown me here, OK? Um, and there's some sense of passing to the spirit world very, very quickly we impact. But we don't need to go into that, because you know how we pass to the yeah. spirit world. Yeah. All I need to inform you is that he's gone beyond that. And therefore, don't look at his body as being the way it is. His mind, his spirit, his consciousness has actually moved on from that. Where do you take me to? Is that Elk? Elkley? Yes. Does that make sense? Elkley? Yeah. Well, Elkley is near well, where we live. Okay, that's <coughs> something that's been mentioned to me, Elkley. Uh, and it's actually been said with an accent like that, Elkley. That's how I said it. Actually, yeah, that's how I know it's in. Elkley. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to mention a dog to you as well. Now, I don't know if it's like a, a Jack Russell type thing, but it's a small oh. dog like that. Does that make sense? He always wanted one. Well, he didn't have one, but he always wanted one. a dog around him in the spirit world yes. anyway, so... It was always a Jack Russell. It's just running around my feet. OK, mention my watch. OK, there's a watch that somebody yes. has been wearing, or they, they've put it on and taken it off. Yes. And he says, I just wish they would wear it. <laughs> so just tell him to keep Still it on. Me. OK, <laughs> we'll get it fixed, because he's, he knows about this. Why is that? He's got such an active mind. Now I feel as though I'm reading books, but I'm also doing everything. It's as though I could read, I could watch telly, I have headphones on, and I'm That's doing right. everything yeah. like this. And I just feel this whole personality. Now, he's doing something funny with his hair here. It's as though he's laughing, right? Yeah. I don't know what he did with his hair just before he passed <laughs> the spirit world, but he did something radical. There's a, a real change he to it. Did. And he's laughing at it, OK? <laughs> Talking about the tattoo. Oh, yes. Remember the tattoo yes. or the tattoos, OK? Because it's, it's important. Mm. Uh, <laughs> the gallery. It's actually a gallery at home of photographs. It's almost yes. like, you know, mentioned the gallery yes. that you've started yeah. to, to work with. God, everything was going so well. He's just said, everything was, I'm so, he's apologising, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, everything was going so well. Um, and he just wants you to know that really and truly, it's like he doesn't feel what you think he felt. What you need to know is, is that he's no longer suffering, or he isn't suffering. And it's Nige, he's, and it's, Nige. It's, it's not saying Nige, he's saying it's Nige. It's Nige, that's what we're called. He says it's Nige, and tell them I'm so much a part of them, still so much a part of them. And he's laughing, and he has the most marvellous laugh. Was... And you've listened to him laughing, there's something you've watched, or it's like either yes. like videotape or whatever, and he says, did you remember I was sitting laughing there? Yeah. So he was with you when you were doing that, OK? Mention, I've got to mention, see the sunglasses? I think it is sunglasses, because somebody has been looking at his sunglasses, <laughs> OK? And these are just simple things to say, like, he's still alive. He's with us. He he's knows with these us. things like... since he has gone to the spirit world. You know, there's, you know, I'm saying to you, like, I know this, but you know the lane? There's yes. a little lane yes, next to where you live. <clears throat> and he's taking me down this lane. Yes. Is there and, often and that's what he says, it's just walking down that lane. I know he's there. Times. You know the lane, I'm in the lane with you many, many times. Yes. And I've got to say, do not stand at my grave and weep. Now, this is a card that somebody has given and you to read. He's just written that this week. Ah, well, do his not. That's, well, she, again, it's his way of just saying that he knows about it, OK? Right, I have to tell you where he's standing and you'll know it. And it's like a massive stone on these hills, on these dales. But there's a huge big stone that stands on its own. But he's standing right up the top as though he's looking. You can see for miles. That's what it feels like. Imagine, if you can, that that's however or wherever. That's so difficult to understand what there's the dimensions of this, because I don't. But I just know that there's some, some way, like a window that opens up and they get through. Yeah. And they can still hear us. They can still see us. They can still sense us. And when you're really, really at rock bottom, just give him a shout, and you will feel his presence, I'm sure. Yeah. But I hope that means something to you. It does, thank you very much. You're more than welcome. Absolutely. Yes, it's wonderful, no, thank no. you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> That's OK. You feel them every bit as much as I do. If you feel you need to go and see a medium, fine. But it's not something I would do regularly. You have a life after a death, and you've got to build on that. Just look into the lens from now, straight on. Great. We want to make sure that we've got enough shadow okay. and we want to have kind of quite soft lighting. We just want something a bit fresher, a bit younger. Right. Top medium Gordon Smith is going global. 
for the new jacket of Spirit Messenger. Yeah. The publishers of his book are launching him in America. First, they need a new look for the front cover. What we're trying to do is reach the audience that you already have and reach a new audience and make it a bit younger and a bit more accessible and a bit, have a bit more of your character coming through. Do you eventually want me to look like Jude Law? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Can you do that? That happens afterwards, good. <laughs> That's when we get on the computer and oh, shave yeah. a bit off the side. I'm going to be airbrushed. <laughs> <laughs> this goes towards the background a bit more for me. In a couple of weeks, right. Gordon will perform on stage in San Francisco. A bit. <laughs> a bit, yeah. good. It's all a long way from his day job as a Glasgow barber. Oh, that is so unnatural to do that. Do you get the feeling, though, that things are starting to happen in your life? And... Yeah, well, I've had that feeling for ages. Uh, to be really honest, uh, it, just the whole mediumship thing, it's, uh, it starts off that you're doing all these little sort of, churches in Glasgow, tiny little rooms and things like that, and then you start working further afield. OK, I'll tell her. God, I'm smoking here. Is he fiddling a book with something? The moment people want to see you or hear you do this, you start to go to bigger venues, different countries. So do you think you can play the two lives, the Absolutely, world star yeah. and the barber? Absolutely. I, I mean, I think everybody plays many parts in their own life anyway. He's talking about teaching. I'm a teacher. Good. There you go. So, Gordon, what about what you're wearing now, then? What's the sort of image? I don't know. Sorry, I just don't know. <laughs> what is this sort of image? Like author? Exactly, author. Yeah. Author, yeah. <laughs> Are you ready? Do they? Yeah. I'm uh, scared. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> when you were smiling there, I just realised who you look like. Who? Who's the lead singer out of Wet, Wet, Wet? No. Yeah. <laughs> Possible, just a bit darker, darker on the background. On we'll do that. Yeah, that's, yeah. Perfect. I'm on a computer. And he, he was typing away you know, his writings. Stuff. Yes. There's an essay or there's something. Gordon has returned to his London home from home, the spiritual mission in Notting Hill. Tonight, he's demonstrating mediumship with Don Galloway, one of the elders of the spiritualist church. Rose Katanak, who runs the church, has organized tonight's service. I would think it's going to be very busy. I, I, I'm only going by the response. We've got two wonderful mediums, Don Galloway and uh, Gordon Smith, both extremely popular. I just think a lot more people are getting interested in it. Yes, I think they probably are. And that, of course, is why it's so terribly important that they're interested in it the right way and not seeking their fortunes being told and uh, what they're going to do, whether they're going to sell their house or marry the man next door or some rubbish like that. There are a lot of the music for that, sadly. I don't think anybody should ever cut off the roots. I've always done the churches and I always will do. Now you must always remember where you came from. Hopefully, I can still manage to keep my feet in the ground. Is Gordon hope for the future as far as your movement's concerned? Oh, tremendously. Tremendously. Uh, not only for the quality of his work, but for his um, uh, integrity. Do you mind him going to America? You don't think that's too commercial? I don't mind where he goes, as long as he does a good job, and knowing Gordon, he will do a good job. But um, it's very easy, you know, to have your head turned. Um, you have to be quite a strong person uh, to be able to contend with that, and he'll be all right. But he won't be spoiled. I'll stake my life on that. Mm, really would. No doubt. Oh, Lord, yes, yes. Yes, here we go, Don. What's he playing, for heaven's sake? Goodness. Something angelic. I'm 
could hardly call it that. I should jazz it up a bit. It sounds like something going into a crematorium, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Setting a scene. Oh, that is awful, isn't it? I wouldn't come through if I heard that. <laughs> I'd stay with it. Oh, Jason. So I'd make something out. I know that's awful, isn't it? That is so dreary. As I'm first drawn across here, I'm very strongly uh, aware of a lady in the spirit world, and I feel I want to think there's a lady there. I'm just drawn, I keep being pulled up there, across there. It's second, third row from the back there. Would you know if your father had something like a, a diploma or a, a certificate? Do you understand yes, that? Yes, I do. I know what that is. You know what it is? Yes. It talks about ships passing in the night. Oh. And that is... You understand Yes, he always said that. OK. There you are. I wish you well. OK, thank you all very much. God bless. <laughs> the lady's sitting just in front with a grey colour. What is she writing? She's telling me she's been with you when you've been writing. Okay. I have no idea why... I've shared platforms with countless colleagues, but I've never yet shared with Gordon when he's not done a superb demonstration. Never yet. I feel that I've got to come up to the very back of the church, and I know... That, all right, then. I should. I have a young gentleman coming forward here. And he's just writing the name of David up. And this young man just passed to the spirit world very, very quickly like this, OK? So somebody over here can understand this for me. Yeah. Where are you going here? Uh, there's a lady alive here who's been in a wheelchair, he's telling me. And I don't feel as though she's lost the power of her legs, but she's been taken somewhere in a chair. OK? Yeah, oh, I know, yeah. Because he was there when this was happening as well. And again, it's his way of saying, look, I still see all of these things I'm still interacting with yeah, the yeah. family. Did you? But he's been watching you clearing something. Is there yeah. a garage or an attic? Shed, or... Yeah. Oh, well, he's been in there with you as you've been doing it, OK? Really? He's just said, have you got rid of your visitors? So you've had somebody <laughs> visiting... We did have a few weeks ago. Oh, well, that's fine. Again, I don't want to go any further with that, just to let you know that he was aware of this. Please, well. please, right. Gordon, my son, remain yourself. Oh. Don't let anybody try to alter you or persuade you to anchor your work some other way. You know, like we've done psychometry. That's the energy in an object, and we've done the haunted house. Energy in a house. Well, we're going to find the energy in a house. In Hampshire, medium Craig Hamilton Parker is running a course for people who believe they have a psychic gift. Over the last few months, his development circle has been learning how to make contact with the spirit world. I just saw a sheep then. There's something about gravy. That's it. Oh, my God, that is exactly what I can see. Today, the student medium's are out looking for ley lines. I'm going to get them to do a little bit of dowsing, and I brought these dowsing rods with me, Dalek-like things, exterminate. And uh, they're going to um, try to find if they can discover a ley line here, which I know exists on the tumuli at the top. So do you know much about ley lines? I don't know an awful lot, actually. It's an, a node point, I believe, as well, which means that it's a sort of a special energy. Yeah. A lot of um, haunted houses are on nodes. Believers in ley lines describe them as ancient paths of earth energy that link prehistoric sites. That's oh, oh, God, God, this that compass way. is bloody new. That's, uh, where's that map again? North is that way. That way, wasn't it? So we go further that way. Yeah. It should be over here. If you ask it a question, like where is which direction is the ley line, it should dip. Sorry? Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, when it happens, yeah, as the rods would cross, like or you could even ask so a pendulum as well can be used for the same sort yeah. of purpose. I'm sure it's moving. Try walking towards it. Your conscious mind already knows what's what here. Yeah. Something going on by you. So you reckon that direction, do you? Yeah, and yours are crossing over, don't you? Yeah, they are. Wow! There's an important reason for bringing the circle together today. Craig has chosen one member of the group to join him on stage at a local theatre. It's the ultimate test, performing as a medium in public for the first time. Now, I'm sure you're all up to it, but I think you've got the guts to have a shot at this, Darren. I'd love to, yeah. Yeah? yeah you great. feel all right about yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, it's great, yeah. Because um, it's going to be a full-packed house we've got there. Right. But 
Yeah. I'm going to ask all of you to come up on stage with us, and you're going to give Darren all the energy and support you can do. Yeah, yeah. no yeah. nerves, yeah. right? Just no, lots of energy. Definitely. It doesn't matter what you get. Right. If you get one good bit of evidence, just yeah. one thing that can yeah. prove to somebody that there's, there's a continuation of life after death. He's had consistence in his work within the circle. Some of the others have been a bit more intermittent with what they get. Whoa. <laughs> I think Darren's got the looks, he's got the clairvoyance, and he's absolutely got the determination. I think with all those things put together, Darren will shine. Very lucky, very privileged. I feel really good about it. I'm working with five other mediums I'm in the group, and uh, I feel very lucky to be the one that's chosen to go up on stage. It is Mystic Monday, the night when we talk Built about by his publisher as Britain's best medium, the demand for press interviews with Gordon continues to grow. Have you ever thought that you were psychic? He's been described as Britain's most accurate medium. He's featured in today's Daily Mail, hailed as Psychic Barber. Yes, he is a barber as well. And if you've got a question about psychic experiences, then get your calls in now. Call now. now. You're a huge star. Full page in the mail. I looked at that and I thought, can't fax it. It's well, going to it, dump us. There can't be any real news. That's, that's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hi, Meg. From the Who Daily Press? What is spreading all the time? It really is. And I kept hearing the song, if you're going to San Francisco, it's got the Kenzie thing, and I thought, I wonder if I'm going to San Francisco. And then I thought, yes. So it wasn't a big surprise. That reincarnation is the one that everybody's asking about. Yes. You can't give predictions of death or, or things like that. Wherever he goes, the journalists find him. Bye-bye. Oh, <sighs> when did you first become a medium? <laughs> when did you first realise you had a gift? Is there such a thing as reincarnation? Are there bad spirits, good spirits? Oh, the usual. Shattered. Sounds like uh, tickets have been selling already, have they? they? Have we been doing they quite well? Have. Do you Great. think we'll get a sellout on this? Oh, definitely. Ah, yeah, that's what I want to hear. People interested. <laughs> yeah. Look at that, people are booking. Did you before. take the lady's hat? No. Craig and his wife Jane, who is also a medium, have booked a 400-seat theatre near Southampton for Darren's first performance. I think it would be great. It's got a nice vibration. Oh, look at this. Oh, this is lovely, isn't it? I thought it would be a raised stage, but it doesn't matter. It's quite nice that. I'm coming to the lady at the back. Let's, there. let's just stand over there because I'd like to. So it's a, a move. These won't, about. These won't be here, but I think you and me will deal with it, all right. But you know we're going to bring the development circle on as well. It's going to be a bit daunting for them. No, I, th I think it's a good thing to have people developed because they'll be our legacy after we go into the spirit world. Yeah, it, it will work, Craig. I think it's going to be great. Yeah, I mean it'll be quite exciting. Yeah, feels right. Yeah, it's nice. I want to come to the lady there, the lady with the ugly face and the black aura. <laughs> there are going to be certain perks in going to America, you know. Like what? Nice travel, nice hotels. But I do like that one because of the nature of that book. It looks a bit more mystical. I think you look more like an author in that one. <laughs> do you think so? That one's I think it'll feel like an author. That one looks more like a, a pop idol poster. Before pop he leaves for America, Gordon gives his son, Paul, a sneak preview of the new publicity shots. Well, it's, it's a bit cheesy, really, to be quite honest. Cheesy? Yes. What do you mean cheesy? How cheesy? Bree Stilton, what we're talking it's here? It's not as cheesy as the first bit with the, the huge grin. They've toned your grin down a bit, but <laughs> you still get an air of Tony Blair about it. So, um, <laughs> Tony Blair? Yes. No. G gimmicky, that, that's the word I was looking for. It's a little gimmicky. Yeah. Um, it puts me in mind of one of these uh, daytime talk show hosts that released a book. I have my own show and stuff. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Talking with the Dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. two dead people on today. Did you really love your dead relatives? Did they really love you? That's what we're talking about this morning. Hi, I'm Gordon Smith. I speak to the dead. <laughs> You're an actor. I can see it happening already. Though. Oh, yeah. has spread across the Atlantic to San Francisco. 
and expectations for Gordon's visit are high. American medium John Holland will share a stage with him. I think the audiences will love him. He's so accurate with his evidence here, and plus he has that Scottish accent. I don't think he's going to have a problem here at all. Sonny G at the Spiritualist Church is hoping for a visit. He's coming to America. How exciting, to San Francisco. And we welcome him, truly we do. Alison Abels is convinced Gordon can contact her mother on the other side. I believe that she has chosen him and that she knows that she can come through him. And I believe that's what's going to happen. I love being here. When I look at some of the places I've worked as a medium, you know, some of the little places around Glasgow and different things like that, and to think you end up coming to a place like this, it's fantastic. I've always wanted to be famous, but I wanted to be a singer or famous in a different way. You can't really let your hair down being a medium, you know, you can't really be like a rock medium. Yeah, something in me has always wanted to be, to be noticed, I suppose. Hi, how are you doing? Fine. Who will I sign it to? Judy. I'm going to look forward to hearing you on Sunday. Are you coming along then yes. on Sunday, yeah? Yes. Well, I hope you can get a nice message on Sunday. Thank you. Do my best. Hi, how are you doing? Fine. I don't know what you took off, but you've taken something off. I don't know if it's a pendant or something, but it's something else that's there. It's not the one I see. Right. He's in the there. The photograph is in there. Yeah, yes. That's, that's the one. Just to let you know he's around you. He still loves you, and I've got to talk about the birthday, the special birthday that's coming up. He'll be around for that. OK? Take his oh, love. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> How do I find out when you go to Germany? Because I'll be on my website. Quick question about hair. What do you recommend as a shampoo? Are you having problems it's with itchy, but not the under. When is your birthday? 6th of July, I'm Cancerian. Oh, a cancer? Mm. Is that He's a cancer too. Well, yeah. Aquarius rising, so I'm a bit mad as well. <laughs> Thank you. I see people sometimes. Yeah. It's usually in a flannel top. Yeah. I mean, but guides. they don't ever talk to me or anything. If you see the same people, it's people who are around you, so they're normally like guides and things. It's like what? Like guides. Okay. You know, like spirit guides. Yeah, I just time. see them. They just pass by. Good to meet you. Good luck. <laughs> Thank, well, you. Thank you. Back in Southampton, Darren will soon make his stage debut as a medium. He's arranged some sittings at home for practice. I'm going to be doing a reading for you. His friend Julie has brought along some personal objects to help him tune in. I have, I've brought a picture of my dad. Right, OK. When he was a little boy. Lovely. And this watch which he gave me days before he died. Lovely. I've noticed that you've changed your earrings today or something, have you? I've noticed. I have. Yeah? My right, okay. Today, no, I just, yeah. just want to make sure I'm on a link, that's all, with you. Okay, I'll just meditate with this for a short moment. Okay, when he passed, did you go and visit the grave and put a flower down for him? No. Breathing difficulties and chest pains towards the end. Oh, yeah, he did. Yeah? Yeah, definitely. He died of lung cancer. Right, OK. And was there a nickname for him at all? I'm getting, like, a three-letter word, like a Dan, a Bob... Bill. So, right, OK. That's four, though, isn't it? Right, yeah, yeah. Um, was there a collection of stamps that he used to save, or shillings? Yeah, collection of stamps. Right, OK, cos... Yeah, yeah. Right. OK. Who's a fond lover of 40 Towers? I'm just getting 40 Towers come through and a fond love of this. Well, I think all of us, really. Yeah? There's an issue with your mum. Is your mum passed or not? No, but she nearly did a year ago. Right, because he was there for collecting her. Um, he said that he was ready to collect her, but there was something blocking him doing so. And he just wants to send you his love and that he's there looking for you, you know, and looking out for you and that and always making sure that you're OK. Thank you. OK.
Alison Abels heard about Gordon's visit to San Francisco through her spiritualist church. Knowing his reputation for accuracy, she has asked for a special sitting. Alison is desperate for a spirit message from her mother, who died over a year ago after a long illness. My mother was a funny person. She was an intelligent person. She was an avid reader. She was an opera singer. She was a medium later in her life. She sat in classes to develop her mediumship. She did not see spirit, but she did hear. Allison has visited mediums before, but this time believes her mother has arranged the sitting from beyond the grave. I believe she handpicked him and that his coming here is not a coincidence. And she's put the situation and I'm at the point in time that in my own grief cycle that I'm prepared for her to come in and I can have a conversation and I won't fall apart. It, it'll be a natural occurrence, as natural as if I picked up the phone and called her. Are you quite excited about having a reading from a British medium? Well, as I explained earlier, I'm really stoked about it. And it's, uh, I'm, I'm very excited. I think it's, it's a great opportunity. I, I'm trying not to get myself elevated too much because there's always a chance you can be disappointed, but I haven't been disappointed by spirit before, so I'm not gonna start now. I, I, I think it's gonna be extraordinary. Gordon Smith. Hi, Sonny. So nice, nice to, to meet you at you last. Too, yeah. Welcome. Gordon has accepted an invitation to visit the Spiritualist Church. What a church. We're so proud of this I church. And we're so proud to have you here. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. This is nice, though. Please come I and see what the me. feeling of yes. the place. Yes. Yeah, really. Well, the rates of vibration have been built up over the years, you know. Wow. Yeah. Yes. And oh, they will have, yeah. Yes. Oh, they are. oh, this is nice. My God. As you can see, you can work very well from this. Point. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm holding you to that promise. Okay. <laughs> You're down. the chosen one. The chosen one. <laughs> That is one of the Bank Sisters' yeah. paintings. The church is famous for its collection of spirit paintings. These paintings would just appear from nowhere, right onto the canvas. No brushes, no, no brushes. No, at you this. cannot even see brush strokes no, or anything. No, you can't. That's the and in fact, a couple of our spirit paintings were donated to the University of California, yeah. the, the chemistry department. They could not analyze That's the right. chemistry even. Yeah. They could not analyze it. I received this picture through the mediumship of the Bang Sisters in Chicago in February 1911. The work was done in less than 10 minutes without brush or paint. But wow. They can't prove it, but they can't disprove it. No. How you, you could an artist capture that in 10 minutes? That's right. You couldn't. I mean, that's right. You know, there's some stuff. Darren is looking for advice on how to present himself as a medium on stage. Jane has invited him over for some private tuition. I want to make sure he's got the right clothes. Make sure he knows the right order. And most importantly, he gains confidence to trust what the spirit world gives to him. Hi, Darren. Hi, Come in. Oh, you've got lovely Blimey. things there, I see. I'm going to look after him because he's my little spiritual baby. Oh, thank you. Come in. Come in. Thank you. The good news you're going to go on first my darling but you'll be all right because right, you'll okay. be with me yeah and if you're no good i'm not going to use you anymore <laughs> <laughs> that's great okay my name's darren stevens um i'm here tonight to um give you a reading is that okay? no not reading right, okay. sorry my, my name's darren i'm here tonight to yeah. contact and bring the your loved ones closely together to you right. and I'm very privileged to do this tonight. Okay, um, hello there, uh, my name's Darren Stevens. I'm here with you tonight to give you a direct link to the spirit world and hopefully I can send you out a message that hopefully maybe one of you can receive. That's fantastic, yeah? that is so good, so good. Right. Every medium works different. Some people, if you get a name that comes in, yeah. for example, go with that name and say, can somebody accept so-and-so? Right. Oh, sometimes you might have loved ones that bring pets in. Yeah. Can you pick up anything about me? What now? Yes. 
Anything what you feel around me. Okay. Did you find a pair of shoes in your um, in a wardrobe that you wanted to wear, but you you found something difficult about them? Yes, I did. Right. That's absolutely right. Okay. Also, now they're showing me um, Craig being dressed up in a little boy with a little hat on, a bubble hat. I don't know if he used to wear a bubble hat. Well, he, his mother used to make him try to wear hats, and yeah. he used to hate them, and now right. he's taken to wearing hats, right, as you okay. know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Alison has arrived at Gordon's hotel for her sitting, desperate to hear from her mother, her father, and many other close relatives who have now passed away. We have unusual family names. There's no way someone would know that information. My father was an attorney. Both my parents were college graduates. And if Gordon said, oh, this is your mother, and it was all about baking cookies or something like that, it would just be like, well, that's not my mother. I don't offer. I will say yes, or I don't understand that. I don't recognize it. I make them work. I think it's a good test. As soon as I take your, your hand, I get the sense of a young man very close to you in the spirit world. And I feel as though this is, all right, bless you, actually I feel two very close to you. There's two of them coming in together, two men, I feel, okay, of different generations. I get a very strong sense of this gentleman sort of labouring before he passed to the spirit world. It's his chest that I feel a really deep sense of so almost struggling for his breath. Would that make sense to you? I think so. OK, hold on a wee second, sir. Come on, bless you. He's talking about an anniversary, OK? There's, there's a special anniversary that he's talking about, and I feel as though he passed to the spirit world very close to this anniversary, because it's as though he couldn't be here at that time. Now, I'm not sure it's a birthday or an anniversary, mm -hmm. but it's, it's a special occasion. He died very close to either somebody's birthday or a special anniversary time. Would you know that? I, I think I do, but Hold I... Hold on a second, come on then. Why is that? All right. And I've got to talk about mother, OK? Somebody's shouting mother to me here. Yes. All right, bless you, darling. It's a lady coming through in the spirit world. It's as though the men are not communicating very well. So I've said somebody else communicate, and I get the sense of this lady just joining me. It's as though I'll take over. These guys are no good at this. And it's a completely different personality, I feel now. Somebody who was quite robust, quite strong, okay? okay? And I just feel her presence very much around you just now. Why are you doing that, my darling? All right. But, OK, then. I feel a sense of longer here. Um, being pulled back like this, okay? And it's, it's either combed back tight or it's pulled back because she's showing me a photograph of her where her hair is actually slicked back like this. I get very tired because this is how her physical body was yes. before she passed to the spirit world. She says she's been left on her own, okay? She's talking about you. It's almost like somebody walked out of your life or there's somebody missing in your life now. And I want to go back in the last six, seven years. Right. And, and it's almost like she just wants you to know that you're, going, you're doing fine. You're yes. going to be fine. Why are you going there? Right, come on. Bless you. I feel this lady could have made people's lives all right. She made them feel good, OK? Yeah. She did have a bit of a temper, though, because she's <laughs> laughing here. She says, oh, I wasn't all sweetness and light, you know? And she's giving me... Oh, why is that? I've got to mention Elizabeth, OK? And Elizabeth is in the spirit world with her. It's as though she's taking me back in time here. So I'm going back another generation where Elizabeth... Can you look for that? I can, but I can't Hold think of anyone. Second. Why is that? OK. When I was mentioning Elizabeth, I'm seeing the name of Bess written up here. So you could maybe look at that. I feel as though it's been shortened here from Elizabeth to Bess or Beth. It's just not a name I recognise okay. in the family. Again, I just feel so many different people coming through. And it's as though there's been so many people lost there's in the family. And there. this is where it's becoming really, for me, very confusing. I don't even know which one is linking with me at times. All right. Now, I'm going back to a gentleman here, and I get the sense of somebody passing very quickly. <laughs> But it's like an impact I actually feel. I almost feel 
I'm jumping out of myself like this yes. each time the gentleman comes close to me. And I can't quite get him linked in. I'm saying, come on, get a bit stronger. But there's just this feeling of, oh, and somebody who, OK, tried to be strong in his life, but even if he wasn't always, and it's so at the end of his life, oh, God, there's just so many things I could have still done while I was here, and people still think that of me. I wish I would have done more, OK? Yes. OK. Mm, yeah. Why is that? Mm -hmm. I've just heard a very loud bang go off in my head. Bang! Just this real bang. And I don't know what you're trying to tell me. I just hear the bang, it's like bang. All right. It's almost like the last thing I heard, or that's the last thing I heard, it's a, a bang like this. And I'm saying, please talk to me, but it's like, all right. He doesn't want to talk about it. It's as though I just don't want to go over this in my head. I don't want to go over this in my head. I understand. I mean, I really I actually feel as though I'm holding a gun to myself. That's what it feels like here. That's what it feels like in my hand. It's really quite... And it's as though I don't want to go over that. You don't need to go over that yourself. OK? Hold on a wee second here. Bless you. Promises, promises, promises. We were always going to do other things, but we never really get round to doing them. OK. Is there... Right, sir. Come on. He pretty much honed in on what I believe was my father. When he said the bang, I knew what it meant. This building right here in the corner, I think it's still called the Flood Building, and I think my father's law office was on the fifth floor. So that's it. Oh, that's where he was shot and killed. So that's where he actually entered spirit. So when he was talking about, I don't want to talk about that, or I would, you know, in terms of proximity of this physical world, we were very close to where he went into spirit. So you weren't disappointed that you didn't get more contact from your mother? She did enough. As far as I'm concerned, it was like she was the hostess and everybody came and she let my father have you know, his say, because I've never had anyone bring my father in. Never. And I've been to church many times, and I've never gotten a message from him, much less, you know, this much conversation. So, you know, it was special, because when you live your life, and it's not like I have a memory to sort of mourn, but that disconnection, so that that was, you know, really, it was really special. That's something I won't forget. Is this some more flowers to come? Yeah, there's four more in the car. It's the day of the Hamilton Parker's theatre show. Final preparations are underway. I threaten people with these books. I say, if you don't behave yourself, I'll give you a free copy of the Timeless Wisdom of the Depends. <laughs> them all around so run like a, a circle. The best book's called What to Do When You're Dead. There's a big market for those. This all looks quite lucrative, right? All these books and websites. Yeah, yeah, true. Right livelihood, the Buddhists call it. And I feel that uh, writing is a good form of livelihood. I think it's okay for mediums to charge as well. As long as it's done with honesty. So do you want to be famous? I know you do. I am famous, for goodness sake. <laughs> uh, I like, yeah, I do, I must say. I, I am, when I first sat in circle, the, the medium that taught me, Peter Close, said to me, Craig, you're a showman. You're going to be famous one day because you love being the showman. And yeah, I do. I actually, I do enjoy it. I mean, why not? These flowers are for, to give to people that have lost children, and this is a personal gift from Craig and myself and from the spirit world. It's nice that sometimes people in the spirit world like to give gifts to their loved ones, and they can't materialise them, so we're giving them this evening. <laughs> How are you feeling about tonight, then? Um, all I'm really worried about tonight is my costume change. I'm not worried about linking with spirit. I'm just worrying if I can get my panty girdle on. <laughs>
probably just introducing myself and saying my name on stage in front of 400 people for the first time. It's quite nerve-wracking. <laughs> you know, I can only learn from this. I've had my spirit guide come to me already today, and um, he hasn't elaborated on what I've got to say, but he knows where I've got to go, um, you know, and I'm, I've got, like, a lady with me at the moment that wants to come to the audience tonight. Um, yeah, I don't want to go on too much about it, so I'll, I'll keep it for later on. You're not going to give us any clues? I'm not going to give you any clues, no, because it'll spoil it, and then you'll know and the audience won't, so no. <laughs> Who is your spirit guide? My spirit guide's Brown Bear. Um, he wears two feathers, um, he clears my path, and um, he generally just foresees, you know, where I may go. This is what I want to do, this is my dream, and if I can do this eventually in the future, I'll settle for that. Never tempted ever to cheat. If I was to cheat, I wouldn't want to do it. If someone said to me, have caught me cheating, I would want to stop immediately. I mean, that's probably a bit of a challenge to the sceptics, but I really think if a medium cheats, they should be drummed out of ever doing mediumship ever again. And there are some that do. I know of some that have done and still do. And um, I think if a medium ever cheats, they should stop. <laughs> I'm a real glamour puss. <laughs> Just think if I had a glittery dress on tonight, they think it's the late Diana Dawes come through here. <laughs> eh? As I say to the spirit, well, if you don't come through, I'm never going to work for you lot again. <laughs> You're going to be made redundant, and I mean it. <laughs> Sometimes I ask myself, why do I do it? But if you get one message and it's helped somebody, then it's worthwhile. And I suppose that's my destiny, really. I didn't ask for it. Well, that looks nice, doesn't it? Yeah. I look right in a slinky lady, don't <laughs> I? Mm -hmm. We're ready to go out on stage. We're going to let go of all our nerves. Me too, right? And we're going to go into a nice little meditation beforehand so we can build up our energy and attune ourselves with spirit. Because despite all the organising and everything else, at the end of the day, we've got to link with spirit. Take a big breath. And as you breathe out, think, relaxed. And that will help you to slow down. And let go of all the pressures of the day now. Christine, one of Craig's student mediums, has persuaded her super-sceptic husband, Dave, to attend tonight's event. Thank you. She's hoping the experience will change his view of mediums. So, a picture of Christine. Well, I'm still very much a skeptic. You know, if I can touch it, I know it's there. I could believe in that. That's about it. You want to go straight up those stairs and through that door? Okay, okay. thanks, Bob. You never know who might even get his own message, which then you have to believe. He's quite open to persuasion sometimes. If it's good evidence, he'll take it. I've got a rough idea how it works, and um, I am interested to see if this is the same, because it strikes me that they are all pretty much the same, and it's like, you know, they've gone to a school where they all learn this sort of thing, and they all come out with the same lingo, and um, it's too much the same for my liking. You know, no two ghosts can be the same, can they? <laughs> if they can prove me wrong, then I'll be the first to hold my hand up. In San Francisco, over a thousand people have bought tickets for a show fronted by four top mediums. How many of you are feeling the shift? And for the first time, Gordon will be one of them. Do you believe in miracles? I know you believe in miracles. 
I know you do. I can see all the angels around you. I actually can see a lot of sheep around you, which is the sign of Jesus and peace. My favorite aunt had a sheep ranch, too. Oh! <laughs> it just gets better and better. The type of event that we're doing is much more showy than a spiritualist church. By the way, did you know you're not supposed to eat butter? You're going to have a big audience, and they're all expecting a real kind of razzmatazz thing. And I'm a messenger. I am a revolutionary. I am an evangelist to tell you, you have a choice. You have a choice. You just do what you do. I've worked in theatres in Scotland and around the UK, so you've just got to try and get into that mind and expand a bit to the larger crowd. It, it's a physical thing. you got to get flexible. And if you're flexible, you can go with it. You can flow with it. And it's You've just got to have that trust, I suppose. Ah. It's like anything I do as a medium, I never know what's going to happen. Ah. Thump your chest. Wake up your spirit. Ha. There's a thousand people out there, so I have to be on. So, and this is this is what I do normally, pace back and forth and then relax. I'll be going on in about 20 minutes. Ah! I'll put my aura out and they'll draw close and there are as many people as there are waiting in line out there. I believe there's as many over there waiting to uh, have me do my job. Let's have some hula hoops. Because spirits in the Running around all the bloody cars. I've got a power <laughs> surge, ladies. I'm hot. Right, now, um, road accident. Can anyone take that, please? Can anybody take this in the middle? Yes. What does the lane mean to you, darling? Um, the accident was on a lane. I feel as if she's saying to you, you know, I've been really trying to get through to you for such a long time, but you can't hear me or see me. Would you understand that? Yeah. What's the red car mean to you, please? She had an accident in a red car. Yeah, because she keeps showing me and she's visiting her spirit's going to... But she's not sad. She's not sad. And what's the small picture? Where's the small picture place, please? She's on about a small picture. Don't know. Somebody has a small picture of her. I'm not sure on that one. I'm not sure. Well, she's talking about a small picture. A small picture. OK. Have you been dreaming of her? Just shot. <laughs> You're shocked? Yeah. What are you shocked about? That she's come through? Yeah. Who's planned a girl's night out? She's on about the girl's night out. No, not sure. Somebody's had a girl's night out. No. All right, she doesn't know what we're talking about. Her energy is so strong around you, and she just wants to thank you for making that link with her this evening. Okay? I'll leave you there. All right. Good morning, California. <laughs> They'll love the kilt. It's a great prop. It gets them going. I don't do a lot of talking because I know why you're really here, yes? I paid my money and I want my mother. Right? <laughs> right? How are you feeling? A uh, little bit nervous now. You just sort of feel, I don't know, the energy kind of builds up. And it's the anticipation. This is the worst bit. I used to be at parties. I'd get the nerve up and say, I'm a medium. And they say, oh, I'm a large. <laughs> and I still get it. You're a psychic? What's my name? <laughs> you don't have a script. It either works or it doesn't. Darren is going to link with the spirit world for you. And also Jane is going to come forward with us too to help with the energy and to help support Darren here this evening. The first link. It's time for Darren's big moment. OK, I've got a Jane, uh, a Jennifer, sorry, or Jessica. And I feel I want to go to the back 
of the room, possibly in the left-hand corner over there, um, is Jennifer or Jessica saying to me that Mum had trouble getting here tonight. Is there someone up there who can say this? Now, also, there's problems with um, wine and a, and a car as well, and I feel like this person may have passed uh, at the Christmas time. Um, now, I don't know if anyone can take that up in the top left hand corner there. Is there anyone? No. Um, is there someone up there who can take this? My name is Jennifer. I don't know the mum connection, but the rest of it you're saying makes sense. Yeah? Um, th th they said about the doormat as well, by the front door, that you've got problems with the, the front door. And, and changing the front mat or something? No. OK. OK, are you contemplating a moving house as well or changing jobs? Because I get a lot of movement around you as well. No. OK. Keep with it. OK. OK, well, th there's a yellow flower as well placed in the grave of this as well. Um, quite significant. Still nothing? They're a miserable lot out there, aren't they? Oh, aren't they? That's right. Yeah, aren't they're they? looking at you like no, they're doing no. something wrong. Yeah. <laughs> There's a bus conductor as well, um, in relation to Bob as well. Speak up so he can hear you. You need to hear your voice, darling. <laughs> My father-in-law, who's died, was a bus conductor. That's right. You've got your name. Maybe you've got your name now. OK, well, I feel that the doormat was quite significant as well, and a piece of jewellery uh, that you had trouble getting on tonight. OK, right. Uh, another link up there, Celeste. I've got a friend called Jenny, and his sister passed over. You got it, Darren, you got yeah, it. Believe in yourself. Yeah. <laughs> OK, can you relate to the yellow flower on the grave, though? Oh, yeah. yeah. You, you haven't been thinking about changing your jobs recently, have you? I certainly have. Have you been thinking about changing your diets? Yeah. Yeah, because I feel like you're not eating enough, or someone's telling you you're not eating enough. Yeah, well, maybe not the right thing. Yeah. yeah. And also, I've got someone about hair and makeup, or beaut beautician or something. Sad, I haven't got any. <laughs> right, OK. And just to say to you, you know, that they're around you and they're watching over you, and, you know, if you feel like you need to change, then go with it, you know. Don't let anyone hold you back. Okay. Thank you very much. OK. Thank you. Well done, Darren. Well okay. done. Well done. That was hard. You got it all right, you got the right person, yeah. she didn't take it, and then you had to go back to her again. No, yeah, I did, yeah. You know? And I had a bit of trouble, didn't I? Yeah. My first name was a bit... This is his mum. <laughs> proud of mum. <laughs> and I'm proud of him, and he's lovely. Yeah. I was so worried for him, but I was glad someone came through for him. I knew they would. Yeah. <laughs> £12. Uh, £12, yeah. Do you think he's going to be a medium? I think so. Yes, definitely. Half as good as Craig, I'm not worried. <laughs> right. You want to look as well? Yeah. <laughs> I can't explain some of it. Some of it. So, a uh, small amount of it. Oh, you're so... Mm. <laughs> Annoying. I don't know how you can't watch that. Even just the people's reactions are so... ...smacked where they know it's the truth. Am I not forget about the penny? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never going to be completely... Yeah, it's great, you know, but no. When you die, you will. Especially when you're talking to yourself. That looks terrible. I never usually get anything until I, I get out there and sort of feel just the kind of energies from the, the audience or the congregation. Some mediums say they pick up things on their way to the venue. But no, it just happens for me. Ooh, you got a lot of stuff. Ye oh, yeah. Yeah. OK, and where's the alcohol problem, darling? Uh, everywhere. OK. Everywhere. OK, because when I see a whiskey bottle, to me, someone, it's an alcohol problem more than an occasional cocktail. Do you understand that? Oh, yeah. OK, I understand that. Past and present. Yep. Say your name again for me. Penny. What we do is we just take some of it and... No idea how to do this. 
Penny, your dad's making me weird. Didn't have a chance. I'm getting this. Didn't have a chance to say goodbye. Didn't have a chance to hug you. Didn't have a chance to say the love you kind of stuff here. Do you understand that? Yes. All right. This is it. Showtime. <laughs> God, I'd much rather be back in that spiritualist church right now, getting ready to go on in instead of this. But however, I'm sure at the end of it I'll feel totally different. Yeah, it was it was a doddle. <laughs> Whatever. Right. And now let's give a big warm San Francisco welcome to Gordon Smith. Hello. <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And it really is my pleasure to come and serve the spirit world here in San Francisco. I do hope today that I can be accurate and get some evidence for you from your loved ones. Stop to your right. OK. Second lady in, may I speak to you? Sure. OK. I have a lady in the spirit world, OK? It's a mother lady in the spirit world, OK? And she's talking to me about, all right, the 17th as being important. Oh, yes. My mother's birthday is on the 17th. My okay. wedding anniversary is on the 17th. And my sister passed away on the 17th. OK. <laughs> That's fine. All right. My dear, I'm just seeing the name of Steph being written up above your head. Would you understand who Steph would be? S-T-E-P-H. Stephanie, my niece here. Oh, well, that'll do me fine. <laughs> OK. And somebody must have a rosary that belonged to the lady or that was passed down in the family. Can you understand that? We both do. Oh, that's fine, because she knows about that. And she just wants to let you know that she's been around you. I've got to say thank you for the flowers. Because somebody gave her flowers in her memory today or yesterday. Her son gave her flowers yesterday. There you go. <laughs> well, and she just wants you to know that because you're still very doubtful of this whole thing. You are? A little. Oh, OK. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore. Okay. Bless you, darling. Right. Mm -hmm. I've also got to say happy birthday in the month of May. Okay? Stephanie. Is that yours? Oh, God bless. Yeah, That's daughter. lovely. It's wonderful when the spirit world can come through this close. Tell her I know about the house, but there's a lot of work getting done in one of the houses. Okay. They're working on my kitchen. Well, that's it. She knows about that. <laughs> and that's just her way of saying, I'm still alive, I'm still around, and I can still see what's happening here and now. And there's the name of Judy or Julie, I've got to shout. Julie, Julie her daughter. The name of John has been written up here as well. She has a son-in-law, John. That's fine. Why is that, my darling? All right. We're very, very close to the anniversary time, OK? And this is why she's come, because so many thoughts were going out to her. All right. Take her love, and I'll say God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Again, I get the, a lovely sense of a lady here who's trying to keep a family very much together just now, my dear. Would that make sense? Yes. OK. I've got to say Marie or Maria. Oh, my mother's name is Maria. OK, that's fine. She's just whispering it in my ear. Yes. OK. Marguerite or Margarita? Margar What's your name? Margarita. <laughs> OK. Margarita, can I just very quickly say to you that they're talking about a whole new career or a whole change of what you've been doing, dear? Really? Yeah. And there's a baby in the spirit world as well. And it goes back a generation. But the little baby's with the grandmother. And she's saying, I have the child here as well. OK? Christina, Christina. I lost a baby. OK. <laughs> okay. Oh well, they have the child with them. OK? Bless you. All right. I think people are looking for hope. 
getting evidence that there is a life after death alleviates a heck of a lot of that fear. And you're no longer left with a belief, you're actually left with a knowledge and understanding. Michelle. That's me. Oh, well done. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> Michelle. I love when they do that. Michael. Somebody's just shouted Michael. Who's Michael? Mm -hmm. People like me, mediums, can only give people a glimpse of that life to come. George. Somebody's just shouted George My to you. Grandfather's name is okay, George. George. Skeptics <laughs> are going to be skeptics anyway, and it's not my job to convince the skeptics. Do you understand who Kathy is? It's my daughter. Ah, well, she's just holding the hand of Kathy. They were so okay. Much. Just Kathy tell was her. my mother's caregiver. Okay. Someone's planning to get married. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, my, I think my boyfriend's about to propose. <laughs> <laughs> there are no secrets. I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing if I really didn't have an understanding of this. It's not a belief, it's a knowledge that life goes on and on. I just know what happens. Yeah, I absolutely know it. What time will they place in the lobby? I'm flabbergasted. Because everything, every number, every color, every date, was right on the nose. He gave a sharpie. He disappeared. I'll be right back. Hi. But until this actually happens to you, you always kind of wonder. But when it happens to you, there's not a doubt in your mind. It's just absolutely valid. It's true. It's undeniable. You are lying. Uh, Sorry, my mind is not working. It's okay. <laughs> Fabulous. Fabulous. Now that's mediumship. Fabulous. That's oh the my. kind of mediumship I would love Evidential. to have. Oh, now that's mediumship. <laughs> so exquisite, <laughs> isn't it? So loving, too.